<laughs> All right. All right, you guys, sorry for the delay. We are live now. Hopefully everything is okay. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties with the internet. That's just a great way of saying that uh, we're late a little bit. So. Um, so, yeah, thank you for joining us. We're going to be live through this whole presentation, which is live broadcast on IOPS YouTube channel. Also, extend your cord. Jeff, check it um, so yeah, we're just live right now. We have to recreate another Facebook thing. So bear with us right now as we do have. As you can see, they're getting ready right now. So we're going to be live here to see Saskatchewan Indian Equity Foundation along with the uh, future premier with uh, Noah Wilson, right? Noah Wilson, who's going to be presenting here. So wherever you guys are watching this, please share it. Share away. Share, give a like, all that stuff. But also we'll be uh, interviewing possibly, hopefully, some guests here, and also some speakers. And, uh, while they toss and turn my stuff, it should be right at the bottom. But that's what happens when you go live. Anything can happen. And say, bro, good morning. Okay. Well, in our can, you guys, if you uh, have a moment, go check out his uh, Facebook page, which will be Money Leader Clothing. And uh, he's uh, another Indigenous entrepreneur to look forward to as uh, Money Leader Clothing will be, I believe, your next big, best thing, next big thing. Not best thing. All Indigenous uh, businesses. Uh, the next best thing and it's all good as we all got to support each other so everyone has a niche within the niche so money leader clothing check them out so we're just getting ready to set up here and then uh i think we're trying to plug in uh, what are we plugging in just the oh yeah there's yeah right there is that the only one i have left i think so okay okay yeah we're running low on resources here. <laughs> no hardwired internet, no uh, no more uh, extension cords. But there, and they're never stuck. We're good to go. We'll figure it out sometime. So you guys stay tuned, uh, keep tuning in, and uh, if you want to learn more about Indigenous entrepreneurship uh, through Futurepreneur and Seif, uh, Futurepreneur is actually right across Canada. Seif uh, is uh, only within Saskatchewan, but there are other organizations. If you are watching across Canada, there are other organizations similar to Seif. Um, I forget what the one in Alberta is called, but I know it's just outside of it. I forget. I was, when I lived in Alberta, I actually was going to apply there. Maybe no. These are questions that will be asked later. And if you guys have any questions as well, um, don't be afraid to ask in the comments because we will get Noah and all the presenters to uh, answer them. So uh, with that, we're, yeah, even though you're just watching, you guys are also going to be participating. Um, like I said, again, if you want to ask a question, put it in the comments and then I'll put it to work. Like Tyson here. Tyson. My road warrior partner here is actually coming here to learn. So I'm going to ask to actually uh, interview Tyson because he as well wants to become an entrepreneur. So he's here to learn. Hey, brother. So tell us about your, who you are. He's, I'm learning. I'm teaching him real quick about the tech. <laughs> Are you nervous? <laughs> so uh, tell me uh, why you're actually here. Oh, 
And, and that's the thing about of uh, digital entrepreneurs, we always seem like, you know, obviously we have a lot of uh, things working against us, but at the same time, we have a lot of things working for us. And Safe and Future Entrepreneur are one of the good things that, uh, you know, that help Indigenous entrepreneurs get started and get going. Even if you are one and you're already solid in what you do, there's more help along the way if you get it. I mean, you are here at the right place, and uh, you're obviously going to. Yeah, well, there is other ways. There's old school email or not email uh, signs and stuff. But you know, that's the thing we got to start learning how to utilize and utilizing Facebook. You know, even though we don't want to learn it, sometimes the older crew they don't want to learn anything about you know, anything to do with the phone. Sometimes it seems right, but that's where everyone's eyes are. You know. Right here, right here. This is where everyone's eyes are. No matter what you, even when they're driving, is even when they're driving. Is that a good decent size? But uh, you guys throughout the day, I'm gonna have guests here on the low and everything. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, right. Um, all right, I think we're gonna get going here. Yeah. All right. So, Tan Se Bo Jo, No Wilson, Indigenous Cast, So She Is Shining in the Indigenous Valley, She Is Shining About Them. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for your patience this morning. Um, it's always fun having uh, in-person events, but with that, it comes to uh, opportunities for technical difficulties. So we, uh, we had some fun things, had setting everything up, but uh, just a disclaimer, we are going to be um, uh, showcasing this live um, with our friend uh, uh, Nathan uh, Arias and IOPS. Um, uh, so we're going to be uh, presenting this over the webs today. Um, just want to uh, first and foremost thank uh, Saskatchewan Indian Equity Foundation for putting this Indigenous Entrepreneurship um, Workshop together and more importantly thanking all of you for joining today and, and taking the time out of your schedule to, to join this uh, amazing workshop and connect with other uh, like-minded uh, Indigenous uh, uh, entrepreneurs and potential entrepreneurs across, uh, across the Prince Albert uh, region. Um, so today we're going to have a jam-packed day. Um, we're going to be having uh, presentations for myself. Again, my name is Noel Wilson. I'm from Future Printer Canada. Come say hi to me over there at the at the um, at the booth that I have over there, and make sure that you're uh, taking time to go to all the great booths today and learning a little bit more about how our ecosystem is here to support you. Um, we're going to kick it off with uh, with the presentation from Saskatchewan Startup Institute, formerly known as Square One. Um, they're a fantastic resource that uh, I consistently leverage in terms of uh, directing my entrepreneurs to that I'm working with. Um, you know, almost every single um, Indigenous entrepreneur I work with, I'll send them over to Saskatchewan Startup Institute. So we're really lucky to have them uh, here today. And uh, we're going to have uh, um, Adria uh, uh, Prop come um, this morning to, to tell us a little bit more about Saskatchewan Startup Institute, how it will help you get started in terms of uh, launching your business off the ground and getting that. Uh, that initial prep uh, that's required. And uh, without further ado, we are running a little bit behind, so but we're gonna we're gonna make it work today. And uh, and one thing too is we're gonna get you a little bit out of your comfort zone today. We're gonna get everyone interacting with one another, but it's not just gonna be presentations today. So be prepared to kind of uh, move tables at some point, probably around uh, 11, 15, because we're gonna get everyone working together, sharing their ideas, uh, and uh, and really collaborating and interacting with one another, because that's what's all about. Especially now we're in person today. So. Um, without further ado, uh, Adria is, uh, is going to be joining us, so please give her a welcome, uh, a warm welcome to PA and uh, and enjoy the uh, enjoy the presentation. Thanks, Noah. I'm just going to move over here so that I can actually move the slide block. Is that good? Is this okay if I do this? Yeah, you're good. Okay, great. All right, well, thank you. As mentioned, my name is Adria. You can find me, I'll be over at our SAS Startup Institute booth if you have any questions on anything I go through. And again, thank you for your patience while we go through the technical side of presenting. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna dive right into it. Um, I for sure am a pacer when I talk, so it's probably best if I can move the mic while I'm talking today. 
But we're here to talk about entrepreneurship. And if you're in a starting phase, if you're in the business planning phase, that's amazing. Um, we're here to go through what is entrepreneurship 101 and what are those basics to getting started in building your business in Saskatchewan. So just as a bit of like, who is SAS Startup? Where are we? Um, we have two tangible office spaces. So we have one in Saskatoon as our main office space, and we also have one in Regina. Um, but with that in mind, we do service the province of Saskatchewan. So if you are wanting to book an appointment with one of our advisors, you can have a Zoom call, you can have a phone call, um, or you're always welcome to pop in during our office hours. So we're SAS Startup Institute. We are delivered by SCRIDA, which is a mouthful. It's Saskatoon Regional Economic Development Authority, and that's based in Saskatoon. And the reason I'm going through this is because we're funded by Prairie's Economic Development Canada. So the perk to that is all of our resources, or 99.9% .9 of them, are actually free to entrepreneurs to come and see us. So think of us as your librarians, specifically for entrepreneurship. So we're gonna get into our presentation today. I'm gonna to pick your brains a little bit. So there's gonna be some thought exercises. So there's a few familiar faces you may, I may have already met with, which is lovely to see you in person here. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to carry on. So my first question I'm actually gonna pose for you folks is what is an entrepreneur? I think sometimes there's stereotypes about what this is or what it looks like or what entrepreneurs do. So. I'm actually going to pass the floor to you. Can anyone give me some just general ideas of what you think an entrepreneur is? Any ideas at all? Someone who's stressed out all the time. Someone who's stressed all the time. Does anyone ever have fun in the entrepreneurial world or is it all just work and stress? Any ideas? Do they work for other people? Some are working for themselves. Some of them are working for ourselves. Any other ideas of what we think entrepreneurship is? All right, let's take a step back maybe. Can we think of any entrepreneur? Do we, do we know any entrepreneur? Can we think of any famous ones so far? Indigenous or? Indigenous or any? <coughs> Has anyone checked Facebook on their phone? Did you know that the person who created Facebook? Um, he also, Mark Zuckerberg, he's an entrepreneur. There's a big scale in the tech world. Who's ever been to a local cafe in PA or a local restaurant before? Maybe I should step right there. Um, or a lash tech. Or a Who's gone to a local salon in town? Just even by show of hands, who's been to a local business? A few of us. So those local businesses are started up as entrepreneurs. Those are all entrepreneurs. So then my next question is also for you folks. Um, who in this room wants to become an entrepreneur? I think most of us are here for that. So it, it's always great to just sort of feel it, see where we're at, and what we actually think an entrepreneur is. So by definition, an entrepreneur is someone who organizes, manages, and assumes the risks of a business. So the reward to that is if your business is successful, you get to reap those rewards as the entrepreneur. But then the other liability side is if something goes sideways, those risks also fall on you as an entrepreneur. So taking on this journey, there are a lot of steps, but it can be equally rewarding. But on the flip side of that scale, there are liabilities to be aware of. And this isn't meant to be scary. This is meant to be more of let's proactively work on some of those risks so that we can slide you to that success scale of entrepreneurship. So I know we've been off to a slow start this morning, so I'm going to keep everyone's brains thinking here. And I'm going to let you look at a couple answers here, but I'm going to switch it back. Who can think of any pros to becoming an entrepreneur? What are some of the things that attract you to wanting to run your own business? Can anyone share any ideas you might have on that? For sure. And for those who maybe can't hear on that side, her answer was the freedom to be your own boss and do things the way you would like to do them. That's a great answer. Does anyone else have any other pros that they think there are to being your becoming self-sufficient? Self That's hugely a, a big characteristic, having that empowerment to step into yourself and owning your own business. Any other pros that we can consider? It's the service you give, like 
<clears throat> whatever your business is, it's like, you know, the thought that you get to help other people, mm. you know, it's good to make the money, but at the same time, you're helping, you know, help people in a good way. Hopefully, hopefully it's in a good way. That's a great answer is you're actually choosing to do something you want. It's not, you're going into a nine to five job and you're being told here are the tasks as an entrepreneur. Um, you're choosing a career path where you get to help people, you get to do more. Um, and I guess I'm going to flip it over to the other side. Who's considered some of the cons that go along with being an entrepreneur? Does anyone have any ideas on that piece? <laughs> it's really hard at the beginning. There's not a lot of money. The reward all comes at the end. It kind of feels like if you're looking at even post-secondary or starting an entrepreneurial your own business, it's up front, they want all the money, and you're not going to have the accolades to actually have the money until the end. So sometimes it feels like a backward cycle. So if that's the case, how are we going to actually bridge that gap from having a business idea and getting to that reward phase of I have a successful business that's operating and I have all those pros that we were talking about? So just to go through a few more of those pros and cons here, we, I think we nailed them. You get to be your own boss. You have those flexible working hours. You get to use skills that you already have. So put up, is there any crafters in the room or any leaders, a few of us? So we actually get to use those unique skill sets we have, and we actually get to essentially get paid for them, which is lovely. Um, if only I could get paid to nap, that I think would be my skill set. But um, those are some of the cons. Um, no fixed income. So that is the risk of taking entrepreneurship is you're now the boss. So there's no one paying you that salary role. You're responsible for running your business to create income. Um, there are potentially longer hours to get it started until you're functioning. Um, and it can be challenging work because as the entrepreneur, you're wearing an accounting hat some days. Some days you're wearing an HR hat. Some days you are getting to just do your craft and be creative. And I think when we're in that entrepreneurial role, I think it's important to just be aware that there are numerous hats to wear. So there is this disconnect of starting up and we're trying to have that successful business. And I think there has been some realizations and we have some great organizations surrounding us in the room today who are here to try and help bridge that gap. And from a statistical matter, which we have some stats up here, in Saskatchewan, 99% of businesses are small businesses. So that means most of our folks in town are working for small businesses or starting small businesses. In addition, 72% of small business owners are going to retire. I think we've all heard of baby boomers before. It's that big generation who's about to enter retirement. So some of those folks are at the end of that trajectory. They've been running those small businesses for how many years? Who's going to continue running them? Who's going to continue running the farms? I think for this new crew of folks coming in to enter the workforce, um, that 72% of folks leaving the workforce is opening up a lot of doors. There are a lot of, or 65 is usually the age I think people like to say they're going to retire, but who's going to sort of follow that legacy? And I think just keeping an open mind that it might feel really daunting at that beginning idea phase of how am I going to become an entrepreneur? But just know that you have those mentors who have done this journey and they've made it to the end. And maybe they want you to, they may want to mentor you to take on what they've already built and carry on their legacy. And just for an income purpose, 6.3 billion of total wages and salaries come from small businesses in Saskatchewan. So just some numbers to let those resonate. All right, so we named a couple entrepreneurs. Um, but I think a big thing as well is one of the solutions to having a successful business is often your business is going to solve a problem. So I think most people in the room plan to own their own business. So you're welcome to share if anyone's feeling brave. And if you're not going to be brave with me, Noah's going to make you brave. So I might be an easier one to practice with with some participation questions. Um, but what we're going to do next is we're going to go through a thought exercise. And this is just going to start help you putting on pay. We're not going to sign any bills today. We're not going to open any accounts. I just want you to start thinking like you're that entrepreneur and go through some of those exercises that would happen when you're in that role. So first, can anyone share something that you feel like you're really good at? Is that yoga or crafting? Does anyone have anything they want to share that they feel like they're really good at? Or any hobbies? 
Does anyone paint in the room? Uh, we might have some crafters, we might have some painters. Great. Um, so I think for yourself in your own business, if you want to put on your thinking cap and think of what are you really great at? Are you great at communicating? Are you great at writing? Are you great at designing? Are you great with your hands? Are you a trades person? I think once you can go through this evaluating your business, I want you to pick something that you're really good at. I'm going to pretend that I'm really great at making coffee and I wanted to make a coffee shop. So in this scenario, I love my coffee and I might want to have a coffee shop. We're going to go through this example and sort of see if it would be feasible. The second question is, I like drinking coffee. So what resources would I need to get a coffee shop started? Does anyone think they could guess some of the things that would go along with what goes with a coffee shop? Coffee supplies, that's a great one. I might need a shop, for instance, that I'm going to actually be able to serve the coffee from. Can we think of any other of the tangible things that I might need or resources I might need to run a coffee shop? Staff, for sure. Any other ideas? Supplies, for sure. Debit machine, a way to accept cash for my business, so that's obviously an important thing as well. Computer, for sure. Maybe some accounting services or software to go on that computer. These are all great ideas. So I think all of those things can start to feel overwhelming in our minds. And I feel like in when we're starting to create a business, there's really three main phases that I like to walk people through. One is that idea phase. I like to call this the honeymoon phase. You get to imagine your daydream. You're not putting any money out yet. And you get to just have that fun. Go build your Pinterest boards. Go sketch your ideas out. What does your ideal business look like? And I feel like that phase two is business planning. How are we going to tangibly make it happen? How are we going to put our idea onto paper to communicate it to people who are going to help us grow it? So when I'm thinking of these resources, this is a great step to sort of transition from that honeymoon phase into, okay, let's start making a list of these resources. How, where am I going to get the coffee beans from? Because we can't grow coffee beans in Saskatchewan based on our climate. So where am I going to get the coffee beans from? How am I going to ship them here? How am I going to package it? And I think once you start putting some of those questions down onto paper, you can then start actually answering some of those questions. So when someone, let's say you're approaching for financing from Noah here, and he says, how much do you need? Have you thought about how much you need yet? Can you tangibly put on a piece of paper, here's how much I need and why I need it? But more importantly, here's how I'm going to pay it back to you, right? Um, so once we sort of establish some of those resources we need, we're going to step, switch over to step number three. So who is your target market now and who will it be in the future? So this is important. Um, it might be great to have this lovely business idea, but if you don't think anyone's going to actually purchase your products, it might not be a feasible business idea to work investing that money into. Um, if nobody likes coffee because it tasted awful, people aren't going to buy my coffee. So I need to think about who actually drinks coffee because it's not going to be a child. At least probably most children aren't going to be like, wake up when they're four from watching cartoons and be like, I want a cup of coffee. Usually they want an orange juice or an apple juice, right? I'm probably going to try and go after um, maybe the tired moms who need a cup of coffee just to wake up and maybe have 30 seconds of just holding something warm and being comforted. Um, maybe I'm looking for those students who are working really hard. Um, who's actually drinking that coffee and do I foresee them still being in that industry? And then this sort of transitions into number four is if I've identified these people who might be willing to use my coffee, are they going to pay for it? Realistically, the kids, if they're five, they don't want to buy coffee. They don't have money to spend on that. They'd rather go buy candy 100% and I don't blame them. But with the parents, maybe, maybe the teenagers, um, maybe they actually have money or disposable income to spend. So on that front, I can sort of see if I'm going to be spending money in step two on acquiring resources, everything really works well and it's cyclical. How is that cash flow I put out going to come back? Are there customers willing to pay that money back? So for your business, can you picture who's going to be the one who's going to purchase your goods or your services? And then finally, five, this is how are you going to promote your services? Because I've seen businesses come in and they have this great plan, but no one knows about it. I'm like, 
I just want to scream from the rooftop, so I think this is. But if we forget to tell people we have our business, um, how are they going to know to find us? So thinking, if we're looking for an older demographic who, I have family members that hold their phone like this because they don't want to put on their reading glasses. There's no way they're going to read a digital media ad on it or let alone be on social media. But what would be an impactful way to reach that demographic? Is it actually like going in person to an event and shaking hands and spreading word of mouth advertising? Or is it putting an ad in the newspaper? Or is it, again, hitting that digital media? Maybe I'm trying to hit a, a teenager who is on the other hand. So hopefully this wasn't too scary of an exercise, but just one to get you thinking, I'm that entrepreneur. How do these questions relate to my business? Am I thinking through some of these considerations? Because it's much better to think through that idea phase before you go into that final phase of action and you realize, oops, I could have maybe solved some of those problems if I would have planned for them instead of now I put out cash and I've made a mistake and now I have to go back and correct it. So this is just a quote, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So a common statistic with entrepreneurs is 51% success rate. So if you are planning to get into this business, which I hope all of you are still motivated for, there is a realistic statistic here. Um, go in with a plan. Those who don't go in with a plan run into those groups that could have been solved in that business planning phase. So that good news is SAS Startup Institute has tons of resources to help you get that business plan and they're all free. So when you feel stuck, come to SaaS Startup. If you're, if you're looking for that first step of how do you legally start your business, you're ready to come out of that honeymoon phase of idea phase. How are we going to put it, sorry, how are we going to put it onto paper? Um, book, a, book a meeting with one of our advisors. We have a pretty, in my opinion, a rock star team. I love going to work every day. And we are problem solvers. We want to help you with research. We want to provide you with research. So really, plan to have a plan. And this is just a sort of chat about, this is just to verify some of what I'm just saying here is why do businesses fail? Um, sometimes it's lack of originality. If I go set up a burger shop next to McDonald's, people are probably just going to go to McDonald's because that's part of their routine. Um, but maybe there's something special about my burgers. Maybe I use... Um, maybe I use beef from a local farmer just outside of PA and my burgers are local organic beef. Maybe that makes mine different. But if it's the exact same burger as McDonald's, people are probably just going to go there, right? Um, and sometimes lack of experience um, can be a deciding factor for business success. Um, so it is, there is a slice of humble pie that comes with entrepreneurship in knowing you can be really good at your craft, but you're always going to be learning in the journey. It's it's a very rewarding journey, but you will always be learning throughout it. So business planning, just by show of hands in the room, who has started a business plan or is working on a business plan? All right, a few of us are in this phase, which is great. So for those of you who might be in that honeymoon phase and are maybe starting to convince you to come over to the business planning phase and getting that idea onto paper, um, there's some key parts that go into a business plan. This, this document serves as a roadmap for you as a decision maker of your business. It serves as a conveyor of your idea to people who aren't internal to your organization. And it's also sort of a key ingredient for securing financing in the future. So that has to cross off a lot of boxes. Who remembers writing research papers in school? Anyone? Pretty hard to get it and do a good job the night before. Um, typically, we recommend spending at least 50 hours on your business plan, and that's a, that's a lot of time, but it's also meant to be empowering you as a decision maker. So that's going to include things such as a SWOT analysis, it's going to include third party research, it's going to include your action plan, and we'll get into a little bit more of this as we continue through here. So this is just a little bit of info on some areas you can research. These are all things that you can reach out to an advisor once you get to this phase and we can help you with. But just for time management today, we're gonna skip over this piece. Um, and we're just gonna run through the typical contents in a business plan. So that top page is your executive summary. It feels backwards. Usually you write it at the very end because you come to that clear idea of here's the summary of my business. Um, but that's a super key piece. 
Um, there's also your business intro and description, market analysis, your sales strategies and what you're going to do for your marketing plans, your HR if that's applicable, if you're going to be hiring staff for your team to be operating, um, and your financials. Who here loves spreadsheets? Okay, I need to teach everyone my love for spreadsheets. These are a game changer. You want to learn to love them. They make your life so much easier. It's tedious to start with them, but for anyone who doesn't want to be an accountant by trade, 100% me, um, learn to love your spreadsheets. Be willing to lean into that uncomfortable piece of finances because as soon, you don't have to be an expert. You just need to know enough that you can make educated decisions. And if you can just go into a spreadsheet, maybe memorize a couple of the keyboard shortcuts, math you don't have to do anymore. The spreadsheet does all of it for you and it's amazing. But when you're using a spreadsheet, that math is going to be accurate. And it's also going to be very helpful for your future investors, for your future partners, to give a very clear financial picture of your organization. Because numbers also are a very great way to measure. Is this a plan that's going to end with a profit, or is it a plan that's not? And I'm assuming most people in this room would like a plan where their business profits. I think we would all like to earn money at the end of our business. So are there any questions on the business plan piece so far? Is anyone feeling super afraid of it, feeling excited for it, maybe mixed emotions? Does anyone want to share where they're at on that piece? Quiet room today. That's all right. Well, all I'll say is the business plan piece is very important. And like I said, some of the folks around the room are going to probably articulate that need to have a business plan and these are just some of the lovely organizations that can help you when it comes to financing your business but sort of that key step is show up with a business plan and then proceed to the next step sometimes if you skip that business plan piece and you just go right away and ask for financing often they'll send you back to us so i'm just here to tell you come first let's write your business plan and then we'll send you off successfully to go get that capital so business plan is step one there's also some other legal steps that happen when you're looking to set up your business in Saskatchewan. So just by show of hands, does anyone have a business name picked out for their business so far? A few of us do, great. Um, how about business structures? Do we feel like we know our business structure yet? A few of us might, a few of us might not. Um, we also, what about tax accounts? All of our favorite money in spreadsheets. There's actual tax accounts that need to be set up for operating your business in Saskatchewan. Um, and then also just depending on the nature of your business, there can be employer standards that need to be met as well. So these are all legal obligations that when you decide to become an entrepreneur, you're also accepting these responsibilities. And I'm not here to tell you how to run your business. I'm literally here to help you Let's do these legal steps together. Some of the forms can be a little bit tricky when you're looking at them. If you're looking to register your business name, for example, book an appointment with an advisor, whether it's over Zoom or you want to stop in the office, and we will go line by line with you through those forms. Again, our services are free for this. Um, come on in and let's get you legally set up because there's so much knowledge in this room and I'm excited to get to meet all of you. I will never have all of the knowledge that you have and all of the different trades that you have, but I do hope that you can all go and grow, but I, if you can come to me, I can help you do these legal pieces that you do them one time, and then you graduate from me, and then you get to go back and do your business. But we're here at Fast Startup to really make sure that you're setting it up correctly. I'm going to go through naming your business because I think this one's a fun one, but then some of these other ones we'll, we might go through a little bit quicker. Um, but when it comes to naming your business, there is a legal expectation that there are two parts to your business name. So in this example, Canada National Railway Limited. So if I own this business and I was maybe not great at my creativity skills, and I wanted to call my business Railway. Well, if every railway company named their business railway, that's too general and it's going to be a nightmare trying to figure out what business is the name is. It's just too general. But on the other hand, if I just said my business is Canada National, or if I was opening my coffee shop and I wanted to call it Adria's Place, that's too general. There needs to be two parts to your business name. There needs to be a descriptive part and a distinctive phrase. 
So I think we see it quite often when we look at business names. So Adria's Cafe, that would be have a descriptor and a distinctive phrase to explain what my business name is and what my business of operations is. Um, if it was just Cafe, the name might get rejected. They might not accept it. If it was just Adria's, they might be like, what does that mean? And they might just reject the business name. So when it comes to choosing your business name, um, there does need to be two parts to it. And if you do choose to incorporate your business, um, for legal reasons, there will be one of six endings at the end. So I think we're familiar with these endings, whether it's like Tiffany and Co. at the end, or I think we've all seen the movie, Monsters, Inc. at the end. Um, so Inc., Limited, or Co. at the end, um, those are the three main endings if you're choosing to incorporate your business. Um, but I always like to recommend to you, go on Google, do a Google search for the business name you're thinking, see what comes up, because it's something really opposite to what you do is populating, you might not want to be associated with that. Or if somebody already has the business name, you might not want to go head to head and try and fight someone who got there first. Um, sort of the second piece I like to touch on choosing a business name though as well is um, do a domain search for websites because I find fewer people are referring to phone books, more people are going on Google and looking for a website to find your business. And if you find out that the domain name or someone already has a website using your business name, that can run into really big problems down the road for you because it's going to be really hard for people to find you. So business structures, I'll go through this piece a little bit quickly. Um, essentially, there's four main types. There's a sole proprietor, and this is there's mainly one owner, or there's a partnership where there's two or more owners, or you can incorporate your business. Um, and this is you're creating your business as a separate entity from you. Um, now, you're welcome to stop by my booth and ask a little bit more about some of the advantages and disadvantages to the differences here. Um, you are welcome to start a cooperative, and I think my friend over in cooperatives over here could speak more to cooperatives. We usually deal less with that. If you are looking for a cooperative, I'd refer you to her for sure. Um, but for choosing a business structure, um, depending on the scale of your business, is your business a secondary side hustle to your full-time income supplier? Or is your business going to become your full-time income? That might determine some of the benefits that you would want in becoming either, let's say, a sole proprietor or wanting to incorporate your business. And when it comes to making these decisions, this is going to be the website that this legal step happens on. So this is Information Services Corporation. Um, this is a website I find I get the most questions about. When you get to this phase and you're ready to legally register your business name and decide how you would like to structure your business, and you're just like, I would like a little bit of verification or a little bit of handholding, that is what we're here for. My team is great at this website, whether it's on Zoom or in person, come and book with us and we can help walk you through the forms on here. Um, or if you're feeling confident to do it on your own, you're always welcome to do that. But I think in this step, it is really nice to just have someone who, who's looked at the forms before. We can look at your idea and make sure everything is making sense to what you want it to look like at the end. Um, just because otherwise, if we register it incorrectly, this is one of those things where having your business plan is important. Because if you go ahead and fill out the form, there are some fees attached with registering your name, depending on the type of business you have. Um, if you do it incorrectly, there is a penalty fee, and then you have to recomplete the form to do it correctly. So please come see us. We want you to just fill it out once, and then we can go from there. And now licenses and permits. Put up your hand if you feel like you know what type of licenses and permits your business would need. Did everyone know that they likely need a business license? Couple head nods. So just as a base rule, if usually every municipality will require a business to register with that municipality. So for instance, if I was gonna start my cafe in Saskatoon, I would have to get a city of Saskatoon license. Or if I was going to open um, a beating shop in PA, I would need to get a business license. Um, if you're looking for sort of what are these licenses that I'm now responsible to have, um, BizPal is an amazing website. If you're going to take any notes from this presentation, BizPal would be a great one to note. Um, you Google, you tell them what province you're into operating, and it's going to populate a list of all the different 
licenses or registrations that might be required for the industry of the business you're starting. So it's sort of a build your own adventure based off of your business, but super insightful. That's always my first place I'll go when trying to look at that for a client. All right, everyone's favorite taxes. This is the last scary topic. <laughs> so taxes, like spreadsheets, they're worth doing and getting set up correctly. Any business in Saskatchewan is required to have a PST account set up. And I like to think of the word account like a wallet um, because when the government comes to collect taxes, they're not going to invade your privacy and just go directly into your bank account and take it. You're essentially creating a wallet and the amount that's going to be owed in taxes, you will just put that exact amount into the wallet and then the CRA can just take what's needed. That's the end of that. Now, the actual amount that goes in there, some businesses don't actually have to pay any. They just need to know that you've created a wallet and even if zero dollars goes through it, they just need to know that you've created the account and that you have that business number. Now, I understand that the generals of taxes can be complicated. We're here to uncomplicate them and get them to that base level. GST account, PST account, super important. Are you hiring staff? Are you going to be collecting CPP and EI for your staff? Do you know how much to be withholding from them? So just sort of tax questions like this. It's so much better to be proactive and learn it at the beginning instead of pleading ignorance, getting into trouble, owing a lot of taxes, and then feeling very overwhelmed. Taxes don't actually need to be as scary as I think they are. Could they be simplified? 100% but I'm not a lawyer and I don't get to actually change those laws. But what I can do is I can book an appointment with you. I can walk you through, okay, here's what your business needs to do. Here's what you need to know. You don't need to learn the entire tax code. You need to learn what you need to do to operate within your tax reasons and responsibilities as a business owner. So up here, we can just look at a couple of the different taxes that we do need to sort of be aware of, just depending on the industry that we're gonna start our business in. Now, four is employment standards. This is sort of tagging off onto the taxes piece. Um, these are sort of those responsibilities we have to our staff. Are we giving them the minimum three hour shift that they need? Are we meeting health and safety standards if we're dealing with sensitive minerals or resources? Um, just taking a look through, are we aware that minimum wage is expected to go up? So maybe we're paying someone $15 an hour and that feels like a pretty healthy wage we're paying them, but in two years, that's going to be minimum wage. Are we prepared to be upping up the salary for our staff? And are we adjusting our costs, just being aware of these general employment standards and changes? Now, this is where it can start to feel overwhelming. There's all of these responsibilities that we have to take in as being an entrepreneur. Um, but this is where, again, I'm meant to be here to buffer all of these topics and my fellow advisors. Um, Again, think of us as librarians. Think of us as having all of these encyclopedias behind us specifically for starting a business in Saskatchewan. When you come to us and you say, hey, I'm stuck, this is where I've got to. We love it. We love to solve problems. It's so rewarding for us. So when you're at home and you're just like, pen, your hand is in your forehead and you're just taxes, hate it. Spreadsheets, hate it. Come talk to us. We we will help you as best we can and if there's something that's outside of our scope or if we don't know the answer we're going to connect you with an industry expert who can help you or we're going to refer you to a vetted source we're not just going to send you to no one we're going to send you to someone we've already worked with someone we know who will help specifically in your niche so ultimately there's no cost to our services we're here to help with all of these tough things that go with owning your business we're that step one so that you then graduate to like I mentioned, my fellow colleagues. So specifically, some of the resources that you can tap into as an entrepreneur with us include expert advice. So you can book with our advisors for free just by wanting to be an entrepreneur and having a business idea. We're not going to like background check you. Just come on in or schedule an appointment online. Um, market research. Flashbacks to our business planning part of this presentation. We have access to databases with third-party research that is going to give your business plan credibility. 
schedule with us and we're going to give you those reports. Um, we have a few capacities on a monthly basis because obviously we can't just like hand over all the encyclopedias. They might get a little bit mad at us for plagiarism reasons. Um, but give us give us the, some information about your business and we can provide three types of market research reports. Um, for a starting point, our website, if you ever visit our website, we have tons of free guides that you can just sort of go click around and find some click note information on a variety of topics. Um, and we also have one paid service. This is an ask an expert service. So sort of once you've graduated that business planning phase and you're, let's say you're ready to offer a contract to an employee or you're ready to engage with a third party business to supply them with your product. And let's say you want a lawyer to overlook your contracts. Full disclosure, I'm not a lawyer, but for $25 plus GST, you could schedule with a lawyer for a 45 minute meeting and they could go over those specific questions with you. And this, we offer this service so that as a startup, as mentioned at the beginning, where are we gonna have all this capital at the top? Um, instead of paying a few hundred dollars for a retainer to see a lawyer, it's meant to be go have that specific question with a lawyer for $25, see if they're a good fit and see if that's a lawyer for your business. Maybe it's not a lawyer you need, maybe it's a tax accountant. Go use that service and go see a tax accountant and set everything up and calculate, how much should I be setting aside? Um, maybe it's marketing you need help with. Whatever that industry expert is you're looking for, um, we can you can book directly through our website and it's meant to be a heavily subsidized time to meet with these experts because we we've, we've built those relationships so that they are ready for entrepreneurs for those questions i just want to give you a sneak peek at what some of the market research reports look like because i think this piece can sometimes get confusing so there is a business listings report this is going to come as a excel spreadsheet oh my gosh I'm slurring over here Excel spreadsheet, I think I got rid of the list maybe. Um, this is gonna come as a spreadsheet and this can have a variety of information. It's gonna have a list of maybe potential competitors, maybe you're looking for suppliers, maybe you're looking for um, a specific niche that's related to your industry. And this is going to show you contact information, it's going to show you how many competitors do you have, or if you're a leader and you're looking for who supplies beads if there's a shortage, this research can show you who you could find in whichever geographic area you're searching for. In addition, it's also really helpful for your business plan when you're trying to estimate those expenses. And this comes from a third party researcher. So you can actually look at these numbers to make some healthy estimates. So it's going to show an estimate of how much does this business spend on computer expenses roughly? How much are they spending on insurance? How much are they spending on marketing? And I think once you have that list and you can see approximately what your competitors are spending, it gives you a lot more knowledge and empowerment to make some decisions on, okay, maybe they spend a lot more on marketing than I thought they did. Maybe I'll need to make some extra budget in my business plan for that piece. The second market research report is an industry report. These are the pretty reports. They come with the infographics, they come with the nice arrows and graphs in them. This is essentially a snapshot of your industry. So this is going to give you a forecast of, if I was in a restaurant business, it might say how are restaurants affected in the pandemic and sort of what is the projection for them in the future? Um, is the trend upwards, is the trend downwards? And it's, this isn't a decision maker for if you should do your business or not. This is just meant to be, here's research that's been curated across North America, um, specifically to Canada, are most of our reports. And this just gives you that insight to make decisions of, is my industry looking like it's going to be successful? Is it on an upward trend? Should I really be diving into it? Or is it saying like, maybe if you, made typewriters and the computer age came in and it's saying, you know what, if you make typewriters, you might want to convert to computers. The trend is that typewriters are going to become antiques, not usual functions of administration. So these reports are quite pretty, easy to read, but also super insightful for where is your industry going. And finally, we also have a census profile report. So if you're wanting to tackle small towns, but you have no idea how many people are in all of those small towns, you can request a census profile report. And this is going to show you demographics. This is going to show you populations. This is going to show you expenditures and breakdowns. So if you are wanting to sell clothing and accessories, for instance, look at how much money people are spending on clothing and accessories already. 
maybe you want a piece of that pie. This is this is a great report to sort of see what is the current spending habits of folks in your area. And are you entering a market that people might not know exists? Or are you like joining one that's already like very booming? So those are sort of the three main market research reports. So just to recap, there's the business listing ones that comes in that Excel spreadsheet. There's the industry report, which is that pretty snapshot. And then there's also the census profile, which is going to have those expenditures and it's going to have that demographic information. And you can have all of those for free. Um, but I think I'm going to leave it there for today. This is meant to be an introduction to SAS Startup Institute. I know I talk a lot. Some of my colleagues talk a little less. So if you prefer a slower pace, for good luck with them. Um, but yes, we're SAS Startup Institute. We're here to help you. Um, we're here to try and close that gap of we want to start a business. It's really expensive. It's really hard. How do we get to that operating phase? Come see us, and when we hope you graduate from us, so we can send you off to your lovely partners in this room and across the province. So, on that note, are there any questions about anything at this point? Yeah. You talked about GST and GST. Mm -hmm. Is that something you need right away, like immediately? Um, setting up the account, so like having the wallet created, is. Um, for a GST account, you're going to receive a, what's called a business number from CRA. And then for your PST account, when you're going through your name registration phase, um, there's an ISC website that I put up here where we register the names. There's an option to take five extra minutes in filling out that form, and that goes with the Ministry of Finance of Saskatchewan. So that's a wallet, essentially. So even if your business can collect PST, you need to still just have the wallet there. Does that make sense? No, that makes sense. It's mm -hmm. okay, sounds good. I'll do my best. Like I said, I'm not actually a tax accountant, but those basics we want to make sure you're set up. Um, really, the reason they want you to set up the PST account is for remittance schedules, so it's it has nothing to do with calculating how much tax is going to be collected, it's more of what's going to actually be easier for you as an entrepreneur. So if you're planning to have a big rock star business, and let's say you're going to owe $100,000 in taxes at the end of the year, to so do a cash transaction of $100,000 once versus, say, like four installments, quarterly installments of $25,000 might be a lot easier on your business instead of one month when your board is sitting down and it's like, why did we give away $100,000 this year or this month versus like, oh, we have a quarterly payment set up. It's just easier for your cash flow um but on the other hand if let's say i'm i'm not crafty at all i wish i was but let's say i was just going to make some bracelets on the side and i was just going to sell them in my free time in addition to advising um that's lovely my bracelets probably aren't pretty so i'm not going to sell a lot so the government's going to say she's pretty low risk um if i'm making under thirty thousand dollars of sales in G i have the option to remit gst it's more of an admin break, if that makes any sense. But like I said, we can chat at the table if you have specific tax questions too. Um, are there any other questions or how are we doing so far? Yeah. What is this um, mostly online or at trade shows, et cetera? What do you need for those like licenses? Um, that can, it'll depend on your business. Like it's typically the rule of thumb is you would have a municipal license in the city you're operating in. Um, stop by and we'll chat. I'll, okay. I'll, I need to know more I, about your industry to sort of understand. Um, come chat, we, I'll get a better answer for you. Um, are there any other questions or is everyone ready for me to stop talking? <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to pass it back to Noah. Thank you so much to everyone for having me. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, come stop by my booth. And it's been a pleasure to share the stage and just get to meet you from here. It's a lovely view. All right. Uh, thanks, Adrian. Can this was, uh, and I can't say enough great yeah, things about Saskatchewan Startup Institute. Okay. Really, um, if there's anything you can take away today is is go on their website right now if you have a chance, book an appointment with them and, and have a takeaway uh, with business setup assistance. You know, that's huge. They're really excellent in terms of um, the 
the, uh, the resources and, and expertise they provide there and the secondary market research requests. You know, it's, it's top of the list for entrepreneurs I, I originally speak with. So uh, the Ask an Expert program, that's another uh, program that a lot of my entrepreneurs have been leveraging recently. So there's, there's unlimited resources on the website too. Um, so let's just give another round of applause. Um, it's not easy to come up here in early morning and then kind of engage the crowd. So, um, so let's give her another round of applause. So what we're going to do next is we're going to have a quick break, probably around uh, 15 minutes. Um, so just go outside, uh, take a bath and maybe you can eat. Um, we're going to kind of uh, uh, probably bring this out a little bit more. And then we're going to have Kree from uh, Kree Chichu from uh, C, who's going to tell us a little bit more about how you can access the program as a first nation entrepreneur. And then uh, after that, we'll get right to it with uh, with our presentation at Future So what I'm going to do is again, we're going to get everyone um, involved, not only you know um, uh, in in some work uh, in, in, in some um, um, activities around a validation map. So if everyone can start looking through their packages, if you haven't got a package, make sure you go up to the front. There should be a validation map in your in your um, in your packages there. So um, it's a four quadrants kind of tool we're going to be using after the seed workshop. And since we're going right after seat, I uh, on the break, be prepared to congregate in tables of four to five. So we're, I know we're all spread out, but we're going to get everyone involved. We're going to get everyone working with one another today. So if we can come back from the break and start to move together, introduce yourselves, get comfortable, um, and uh, and we're going to have a great uh, uh, later half of this uh, of the workshop day. So 15 minutes, we'll get right back, and then uh, and then pick a table, introduce yourself, and groups of. Uh, a four to five, um, and then uh, I'll make sure that happens by the time my presentation goes. So if you don't do it right away, we'll 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 uh, we'll pull your arm on that uh, on that end. So 15 minutes, we'll be back um, uh, in. What time is it right now? 10:24. 10:24. Yeah. So we're back in 15. So uh, we'll be fixing this on the back end, uh, and we'll see you in a, in a, in a few moments here. So. You guys, really quick, uh, I am uh, streaming live, so if you guys do want to get interviewed and talk about your business, don't be shy. I'll be, be good, so I'll be right here if you guys want to get interviewed. Oh, nice. So, yeah, Danny and Tisha have been kind of uh, doing a lot of their uh, things at how So, we have a Commentary here. I'm gonna bring it up again. Well, there she was. It's uh, if you want to go check her website out, it's skstartup.ca. Oh, 
Okay. I'm trying to put all the information in one. We're going to get Tyson in here too because uh, we want to see what uh, we learned today so far in presentation. I did uh, put out there to see if anyone else wants to um, come on. What did you learn so far, Matt? What did you think of the presentation? There's a lot behind entrepreneur, eh? You know, it, but you can't get overwhelmed. You can't get overwhelmed because honestly, once you've done those steps, like getting getting a business license, because a lot of us, uh, like for mine, for instance, is uh, federal. You, you, you know, if you are indigenous, I do uh, recommend getting a mailbox. If you don't have one already on reserve, that way you can get something to do or tax free. Right? So if you're filling out another another nation or another community or something, no, 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 no. Right? So, yeah. a lot of a uh, lot of things to think about like that, and that's what something yeah, something I can see can help you start a startup. Uh, also, don't forget to talk to my natural tax person. They'll tell you exactly. Yeah, well, that's it's not my uh, because hey, Tara, how are you? Um, yeah, see, see for, I, when I do my taxes, I haven't really seen it. You pay GST, you've got to get a GST number, right? I, I personally don't have a PST number uh, because my, my company is on reserve. But I'm not a I'm not a tax person that, uh, that uh, you should be taking advice from. This is kind of what my experience is, but do go to uh, you go to a uh, tax person that is actually go to one that actually specializes in indigenous taxes because you are going to get tax firms that they kind of know what's going on with us, but they don't know no no no. So go to ones that actually have, there's actually uh, some tax account companies that do have uh, specific people that work with just indigenous organizations and, and entrepreneurs. So and they know everything inside and out with the taxes. So once again, there's the uh, Saskatchewan Startup uh, website. Uh, there's the phone number, 306-242-4181. Um, and here's the uh, email. Yes, anyway, we're just waiting. Then we're gonna have another pro presenter. I'm so used to doing power this summer. That's all I was doing with power. So, you know, I went from like going for a conference doing these things, lives, going to the power, and back to uh, conference here. So, it's kind of like I don't know, it's like an adjustment night and day. So yeah, we have the trade show right now. I am going to go over the trade show all the booths later. So we're going to go around and check that out. And I'm hoping we get more people to come on here. If not, Tyson here is going to fill that void because he is here and uh, wanted to start a company. So he's going to kind of fill us in what he learned and uh, what he knows he has to do next. Oh, you haven't got one yet? Oh. Oh, just in your head. Go ahead, keep talking. <laughs> no, I'll, put, no talk about it. I'll be right there. Talk about your business plan. Nice. Thank you. camera up here and then uh, yeah. so number one thing yeah you do have to do a business planning yeah. 
There are so many, there are probably people out there with their lives. But yeah, I know getting that business plan, I'm going to be honest, I never had a business plan. I've just went with it, and I'm not saying I'm going to get one. I said 100%. Back then, I knew what I know now. Right? But I've just kind of built my company around what I've been gathering with an experience of coming to lives and doing the job board. Uh, don't forget to go check out I have plans. Yeah, I'm going to go here in a bit. But, uh, you know, it is very important. It's always good to have kind of like the direction where you exactly know where you want to go with the business plan. And once you make that business plan, you don't have to stick to it. It's just kind of like a Right? You know, coming to that, I wanted to say something because more was speaking. When you become an entrepreneur, you have to get out of your comfort zone. There's going to be so many situations that you got to be prepared for, and one of them could be talking in front of people. Like, you're going to have to learn how to, like, what if you go to a company and you have to go to a board and they want you to present you know, to the program because they want to hire you for, say, 30 sessions, right? Like a big, big entree. But they want you to come in front of them, which could be anywhere from two people all the way to 30 people. Sorry, we're just uh, again. How are we doing now, Tara? How are we doing now? Let us know how we're doing. <laughs> Let me know how we're doing now. I thought, because I think you were, well, before you were speaking here, I was talking. Well, that's good. Cool. It's uh, all trial and error. Testing. Testing. Still picking up the background. Every push. And that's another thing I've never been scared to do. Never, like little things like this, it's always good to get help. Like, you know, how much I know we are alive. Right. And even though I've been doing this a lot of times, I do have my headsets now. You see, I just had mics. So now I'm learning on a go. And that's kind of just the same thing as business. You're going to be put in situations like right now. One of the people online is telling me exactly how they, they can hear. So, and you got to kind of think on a fly sometimes. That, that, that's just the way it is. So let me know right away. Can uh, hear Clear, clear. I am trying to uh, get out the uh, voices in the back. So let me know how it how that is going. Uh, right there. I think we're good now. I think we're good. Let me know I did mute that. Go ahead and speak on yours. How are we sounding now, you guys? Let me know how we're sounding right now. I know there is some. Now it's a lot better you can hear. Yeah. 
background. But yeah, like you're like I said, you always got to think on the fly. Um, you know, and with business plans, is that being an entrepreneur, you know, there's, there's there's so many stuff you think you're gonna be ready for, but then eighty percent it's a whole bunch of other stuff you don't even know existed that with that's within your whatever you're doing for your business, whatever your thing is. You know what I mean? Like for EAL, I know you guys. All right, everyone. So just give them a five minute notice. So if you know anyone who might be out and you have their contact, just let them know we're going to be starting in about five minutes. Uh, we're going to be fired. It's great to see everyone interacting with the boots. Uh, make sure you, you, you know, know like, like, as well. you know, just going forward, you know, I wish I knew that. I wish they had all this stuff back then. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, now it's like getting out and uh, getting you know they have specific companies like Saskatchewan startup that are just geared towards uh, geared towards uh, going. right well it's like she said uh, she didn't say a price of how much it costs to hire that to get the majority of this stuff is free that's what it's, it's, it's majority i'm going to say that in, 90 probably 95 percent of getting your business going it's free um you know there's so many government funded programs on here so now we'll see if it's, now it's just gonna get started for free and, uh yeah you guys don't be scared of that right don't let that deter you from starting up the you know i've known people who started companies and they only have 20 dollars in there so they're out and, uh, so don't be scared. Just get out there and uh, ask around. I know right now we're uh, right now we're uh, uh, this is Saskatchewan kind of like see if it's Saskatchewan. I think I I'll get the other names for Alberta and I know there's a whole bunch of them for each province because I know that there's other provinces watching. Um, I'm pretty sure Saskatchewan's a good conversation. I'm gonna try and get out of here. But uh, what else you got looking forward to, uh, Tyson, in regards to uh, what is going on here today? Right now, I'm just curious on how to, I mean, how to get the ass on the right for business, yeah. how to start marketing myself and my company. If, uh, if you know how to use Facebook, if you know how to Snapchat, and I know you're on both, you're on my friends just in my Snapchat. That's that's the start of marketing. You know that? Um, yeah, but the, I just don't know how to do it. Wow. Let's just pretend you have your. Uh, well, you know you do. You've done it. Remember when you were having classes and you were snapping it? I think that was all Nikki. I just try to share whatever she puts on there. Okay. So yeah. So there you guys go. So a quick picture and then a few words on Snap is marketing. People think there's like, you know, you're going to these things to get these things signed and stuff, right? I'm just showing these banners here, but uh, that is part of marketing, but it, it, it's so simple sometimes. It's so simple as a quick snap. Like all you have to show a picture of you versus, right? EAL and then your company name, that's it. Tag location. Or like the way you, you would be swinging the club this guy. <laughs> Did you see that music? <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that I do want to tell you guys about is Google business. It's free. I'm a big Google fan. I know a lot of people are iPhoneers. You're an iPhoneer guy? Yeah. Um, so if one of the things you guys should look into is Google business. It's all free. You put in your, your, your business and Google business thing. There's an app too. You can just go on Google itself and type in Google business. And that'll start tracking uh, uh, people to your business. And you like, you know, so now that there, everyone's uh, slowly returning back to the room, just remember if you haven't had a chance to move tables, try to get to a table uh, and congregate at least four to five of you. And we're gonna yeah, we're gonna encourage that. It's just we got a huge premier uh, uh, for, uh, portion of uh, the workshop today. So uh, if you're already up and about, I think we're gonna go back to here to and, uh, at connect with uh, a group of four to five. We're gonna start in about two minutes. Oh, two minutes. You said we're gonna start here. So I'm gonna put Steve up here. Tyson's gonna go back to the. 
to uh, his seat there. He's going to get ready to uh, pay attention to learn some more. So Zeke is going to be coming up next. Saskatchewan Indian Equity. Is it still Indian or it must be Indigenous? I'm going to say Saskatchewan Indian. No, it says Indian. But yeah, wherever you guys are, if you could please do me a favor and share this where everyone we are live on uh, my YouTube channel as well. And if you guys can only watch a little bit, remind yourself that you can come back on here as uh, live videos are recorded and they do stay on. So uh, we're live on YouTube, my YouTube channel. We're also live on my LinkedIn. So if you're watching on LinkedIn, hello. And we're also live on Twitter and we're live on my Facebook page. So we're going to get ready for Noah Wilson, a future preneur, to come on and uh, chit chat with us. And, uh, or he's not going to chat with us. You know, I'll bring him on after. I actually did a podcast with him. So if you guys want to know any questions about that, because future preneur is right across Canada. Right, Noah? Yeah. Future preneur is right across Canada. So if you're Anywhere in Alberta, uh, Manitoba, if you're anywhere besides Alrighty. Saskatchewan, Canada. So I, I see everyone moving tables. Thanks so much for that. Um, and we're gonna uh, go don't be shy. Time. We're gonna, we're all gonna get to know each other, uh, have some fun today at the later half. Uh, but first, we're gonna get back on track with um, Saskatchewan um, Indian, uh, Indian Equity Foundation. Again, thanks for uh, uh, thanks to C for hosting this great event, bringing together. Uh, like-minded indigenous uh, innovators and entrepreneurs that are in the room. I think it's super exciting that we're able to uh, collaborate uh, meet with other uh, entrepreneurs and share ideas and uh, and be able to kind of go on this journey together. Because uh, being an entrepreneur can be uh, can be uh, scary and lonely at times, but knowing that there's other uh, indigenous entrepreneurs on that journey with you is is uh, is not only a a way to to kind of keep you focused and and motivated, but also uh, to help build your build out your network. So. Uh, shout out to Steve and uh, and make sure over the lunch hour and through our breaks that you're taking a chance to go to all the booths. Um, we have Community Futures, uh, which are a great resource in the Prince Albert region and across uh, across Turtle Island, for that matter. Um, we have the uh, Indigenous Business Development Services, um, which is a which is an offset of, uh, of Community Futures, I believe, um, that focuses on supporting Indigenous um, business uh, business development. Um, we have uh, Cooperatives First and Trista, who's a great resource. And uh, uh, Saskatchewan Startup Institute, make sure that you sign up and, and reach out and ask more questions there. And of course, come say hi to me. Uh, I, ideally, I'd like to get some um, entrepreneurs registered and in our program so we can reach out and uh, get started. But without further ado, um, please welcome Preach Chichu, who's, uh, who's going to be uh, sharing a little bit more about SEAF. And uh, give her a warm welcome. And, uh, and yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to present on the grant program that we have at SEED. I'm just going to talk about the introduction, eligibility, financing, timeline, and next steps. So our grant program was originally ISCs. I still call it INAC. Um, so it is, it is still their program. We just administer it for them. So we still have to abide by their policies. It is a conditional grant to start, expand, or acquire a business. The minimum for individuals is $99,999. Maximum for bands is $250,000. There are two stages. Our stage one is a business plan, um, CDV, environmental, or a feasibility study. All the businesses do need a business plan. Uh, CDV, if you are acquiring a business, we would ask for that certified business valuation if we find that um, they're asking an unfair price. If we find the purchase agreement is unfair for you as the entrepreneur. Environmental is if you're opening a gas station, we would need that completed. Feasibility study, if we question the market within the area you're trying to open your business, we will ask for a feasibility study. And in that stage one, CEF would pay 75% of the cost of all of those, and you as the entrepreneur would pay 25%. Stage two would be your actual project costs to start up your business. The business development officer role, so me and Diane, she's the other business de development officer that works in the grant program. We, um, it is our job to collect all the necessary information so we can do a complete report 
and we have to present that report to a committee and they come in and they decide if you are approved or declined. The eligibility of the applicant must be status. You must work in the project full time, which means you cannot be employed anywhere else. Applicant must perform the core work of the project. So let's say for example, um, like for me, all my background is just administration. But if I say, oh, I want to start a construction company because I can make a lot of money out of it, I would not qualify for this program because I cannot perform the construction work. Africa, if you are in a partnership with a non-status individual, you must own at least 51% of that business and perform the core work of that project. List of avoids stuff that are not eligible for the grant program uh, and businesses to do with alcohol, tobacco, gambling, sexually exploitive material, cannabis, lending or pawn shops, or the manufacturing or assembly or enhancements of firearms. Now we do take in consideration gas stations because they do sell tobacco and they do lottos, but we take that case by case. Passive businesses, for example, if you wanted to purchase an apartment building, that would be passive because you are not required to work 40 hours a week in a business, uh, apartment, managing an apartment building. Land or buildings are not eligible unless you are remote. And the replacement of assets. So if you're coming to us for an expansion and let's say that um, your tractor is breaking down, we can't replace that tractor for you. Uh, eligibility of the project costs, they must be related to generating revenue in your business. Arms Lake transaction policy, you cannot purchase from a family member. And we require all our clients to purchase within Canada only. But there are some instances where somebody will have to purchase from the States or China. But again, we take that case by case. The applicant must have 10% cash equity of the total project costs. And how we verify that is we just ask you for a bank statement showing that you have that 10% in your bank account. To qualify for the grant, you must qualify for a loan from an authorized lender. This is a needs-based program. If you do not require a loan, then you do not need the program. There are different percentages based on the project and age. 30% would be to expand or acquire a business. 40% would be the startup of a business. 50% is a youth grant, 35 years and under. But if the youth is wanting to expand or acquire, the 30% um, will trump that 50%. This is an example. Joe's landscaping business. So he's coming to us. He says he needs all of this to start up his business. He needs his bobcat and his truck, his equipment. He needs some bookkeeping, some marketing costs, and insurance. So his total project cost to start up his business is $100,000. So this is just a breakdown from the grant point of view. He needs 10% of his own equity. So he has $10,000 in the bank for that. We would pay 40% because Joe is 40 years old. So it's 40,000, 50,000 50, would be the 50% from an authorized lender. So we average about one to two months because um, we, like I mentioned before, we have a committee that comes in and they meet every six to eight weeks. So um, we say to contact us early in the process. Sometimes if you even just have an idea, you know, we can refer you to other organizations that can help you out in that way. It is a timely process. And um, we do have an internal deadline, which is three weeks prior to when the committee meets. The reason why our internal deadline is so far in advance is because it gives us one week to work on all our reports and it gets sent out to our advisor who used to work at INAC with this program. He looks over them to ensure that they are eligible to go through. And if there is some information missing, he'll give us back the reports. And we have three days to fix up those reports before they get sent out to the committee a week before they meet. <clears throat> so we say step one, estimate, estimate realistic project costs, like do your research and you know get quotes. Speak with the BDO to ensure eligibility. A lot of times we do get applications and we find out that it's not eligible and they get angry with us because they did all the work already. So we say before you do anything, just contact us. 
speak with your lender. You don't necessarily have to be approved for the loan right away, but we need to know that it is possible for you to get a loan. Because if you cannot get a loan, you will not qualify for this program. Find a business plan writer, or in more, more cases than not, our clients do write their own business plans with the help of Square, I mean, SAS Startup Institute. I always try to say Square One. Um, and then submit your application form. So um, it's just uh, some stats that we have from the grant program. We did um, get this program from the government in 2013. So we've done since up until March 31st, 2022, we've done 450 grants. 50 of those grants were for bands. 282 were male, 118 were female. And all these jobs created, all these projects created 953 jobs, indigenous jobs. And then we have UNL 17.2 million. So there are me and Diane's contact information, but we also have our business cards over at our booth. Are there any questions? No? Great. Okay. So I'm going to call up Dale Skabinski. He's our loans officer, and he'll talk to you about the loan program. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's good to see everybody here today. Uh, my name is Dale Skidinski. I'm the commercial loans officer for uh, C. And uh, today I'm just going to go over um, the commercial lending products that we have here in the system for years, uh, or future for years, as I should tell. Um, so, one of the things I mentioned earlier uh, today was that uh, one of the challenges for entrepreneurs is access to capital, financial resources, <coughs> and that's where C comes in. So, we have a couple of different products, so different products that we have to offer. Uh, first of all, we do have capital loans, and those are designed to assist uh, entrepreneurs to purchase equipment and, and tools for their business. So if it was a tow truck company, uh, we would offer a capital loan to purchase the actual tow truck, and that can be tools to go on with that. Um, so instead of capital loans, you need a minimum 20% cash equity of your own uh, money that to contribute to the business uh, total project costs. Uh, maximum loan size for capital loans is $300,000. The, uh, the second uh, product we offer are our working capital loans. And those differ from capital loans in, in the sense that, that these loans are designed to assist entrepreneurs in terms of the daily operations of the business. So a person needs uh, assistance with uh, you know, accounting or HR, um, IT services. Uh, this is where working capital loans will come in and uh, design to help entrepreneurs um, you know, meet those uh, expenses on a daily basis, basically. And the maximum loan size for capital loans is $50,000. And uh, the only stipulation with that is that you have to be an existing uh, client of C uh, in order to qualify for a working capital loan. So you would come in uh, as a new client, uh, apply for a capital loan, and then after you get you know, a few months into, into uh, the you know, uh, make monthly payments or, or a year or whatever, uh, then you can actually qualify for a working capital loan and apply for it, as long as you're making uh, pay on monthly payments on time. We would uh, definitely uh, look at that. Um, Pre-qualification. So C targets First Nation individuals, uh, communities, and organizations. Uh, and the saying that if uh, the uh, First Nation individual should have at least 51% ownership in the business. So if you're in partnership with a non-Indigenous person, uh, you would have to have 51% ownership in that business to qualify for a loan uh, through C. Uh, minimum age uh, is 19 years of age. Um, and one of, the things we, one of the things we don't look at is the potential clients is bankruptcy proceedings. So anybody who's been bankrupt for the last seven years, we will not uh, look at doing that uh, in terms of uh, uh, processing a loan application. And uh, if you actually borrowed from seeds in the past and had to be back to loan, again, we would qualify for, for another loan. So. I got a question. Sure, go ahead. If your partner is not great. Yeah, and as I mentioned, uh, you would have to, so if you're a partner of somebody, you would have to have at least 51% ownership. You'd have to have the majority ownership in the business. As well, yeah, yeah, you have to do all the daily operations of the business. Yeah. All right. So just a quick overview. Um, so businesses located on and off reserve are eligible to apply. Uh, if it is on reserve, one of the things we do require is a BCR, a bank council resolution. Uh, and uh, our interest rates are about 12.5%. Uh, 
And as mentioned earlier, maximum loan size is three hundred thousand dollars. One of the things I like to mention is security. So when it comes to financing, we're lending money out to people, individuals, businesses. And one thing we need to is uh, to help seize, protect these assets are security. So we require um, all commercial loans uh, to be secured with a general security agreement. And so all securities registers would be a personal property registry. And uh, any security being pledged by the applicant has to be free of any liens uh, as well. So just a little touch base on security. So some of the terms and requirements, we typically term out loans for 60 months or five years. Uh, interest rates are 12 and a half percent. And again, cash equity requirement is 20%. If you're going just for a straight loan through seat, it's 20, the cash equity requirement is 20. But as pre mentioned earlier, if you're going to be going to the grant program, uh, that actually gets knocked down to 10%. So um, uh, sweet. Anyway, the example there, if you have a project cost of $100,000, uh, you need 20% cash equity. So it would now we're going to be twenty thousand dollars, but your portion you have to inject into the business. And again, again, if you're going to the grant program, that gets uh, lower than ten percent. All right. In terms of the application, so uh, business plan, we do require business plan to submit all applications. Um, two pieces of ID. We like to see the status card just to verify that you know the person the applicant is a business um, heritage, uh, driver license, and health card. Uh, we also want to verify. Current existing income and like we through pay stubs or CA, CRA tax return. Uh, and we also do credit checks on all applications, of course. And we do the credit, uh, the credit um, applications, or sorry, the credit checks should have, um, you should have a clean credit report, basically. If you do have some some little things on, you know, say parking tickets or whatever it may be, we could work with you, but uh, we like to see those cleared up or at the very least uh, make an effort for those in which to clear up any kind of debt that they're owing on. So. And uh, yeah, so that's the application. And that's it. This is a brief overview of our commercial lending products. But that is my contact information up on the screen. And uh, I do have business cards in the back as well. So if anybody has any questions, uh, either now or in the future, feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to answer them. Are there any questions right now? Good. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks for, for listening. Thank you. So, um, yeah, we've had a great first half of the day, and um, now we're going to be working into more of the interactive portion of today. And again, let's give uh, Seif and everyone of all our partners a hand for being here today and uh, sharing the information. Uh, remember, like, today we're not, it can be information overload. Um, you know, don't, don't feel like you have to know everything by the end of today. That's not the goal, but it's really the fact that you're here, you're, you're in the seats, you're ready to learn, you're ready to engage. It's the first starting point. So make sure you're taking the contacts, make sure you're reaching out. You don't have to know everything today. You don't have to have everything sorted out. And in terms of this next um, section of the of, uh, the workshop today, um, you know, I'm not gonna promise that we're gonna be having your full business plan uh, ready to go by the end of the day. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some critical steps forward in terms of developing your business plan and the key tenants and, and uh, informational pieces you wanna be looking at in terms of creating and creating your business plan. Um, so, first, um, I just want to uh, introduce myself again. So, Bojo Aini, No Wilson, Indigenous Cast, Oshish Kanagani, Indigenous Bawa, Chishi, Them. So, my name is No Wilson. I'm with Futurepreneur uh, Canada. I'm a part of our Indigenous Entrepreneur Startup uh, uh, team. Uh, one of uh, eight of our, of our great members, but uh, our front end have about four staff. I cover Manitoba and Saskatchewan. I'm re uh, recently based, uh, well, I'm based out of Treaty One territories in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. 
My home community is uh, Penguin's First Nation in Interlake region uh, of Manitoba. And um, and yeah, it's a real, it's an honor to be here. And uh, I've really enjoyed uh, Prince Albert uh, since I've been here uh, the last couple of days. So um, we're gonna be focusing on really honing in on your business idea. Even if you started to work on your business plan, even if you have been operating for um, a little bit, or maybe you've had a side hustle for a couple of years. I mean, a lot of the times we find uh, some of these key areas aren't as flushed out um, as um, as you may think, or like once you start doing the exercise, you'll realize, oh, you know what? You know, I have a great business idea. I have maybe a great product and service, but to be able to articulate that and communicate that not only to uh, potential customers, but to you know uh, business development um, managers or or, or, or a, a bank is really important. So it's really about being able to communicate what your business is, and then that's a great starting point and a great way to start market validating your idea. To see if it lands or if it makes sense um and if you know you play telephone they're able to kind of explain what your business is explain who you are and and why it might be a good fit if they're not the best customer for your for your for your, um, for your um, product or service um since i'm a guest on these lands i do want to start out and uh, acknowledge uh the lands we're located on today so you know in the heartland of northern saskatchewan prince albert is located in three to six towards your territory in the homeland of groups who have called prince albert um the area, uh, their home for thousands of years. Um, these are the indigenous groups. Um, um, some of these indigenous groups are the Woodland Cree, Plains Cree, Swampy Cree, Dene, um, uh, Dakota, and the Métis Nation. We, we pay respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship um, uh, to, uh, with one another. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories and we acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past. And we dedicate ourselves to move forward in the partner in partnership with indigenous communities um, in the spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Um, so if you haven't already uh, moved to a table, uh, please make sure you're in at least a table of uh, uh, two to, or four to five. Um, so I'm gonna challenge everyone. Um, good good sir, there. Are, are you here for you wanna maybe move to a group? Um, let's see a group here. Group of three. I would say choose any one of these three. These look like great, great tables over here. Thanks so much. You got a great group over here. But the main thing today is this is a safe space for Indigenous entrepreneurs to innovate, to ideate. And one of the tenets of that is to have an anti harassment policy and create a safe space here. So one of the first things I just want to kind of, um, uh, you know, acknowledge is that we're anti harassment policy. So um, if you feel discriminated against, if you feel uncomfortable, um, <clears throat> if you feel like you're being harassed or, or you know, um, they're not in the spirit of, of a good constructive criticism, um, then uh, then let one of us know um, um, the C team or, or call me aside and we'll make sure we take care of that. Um, but really today is gonna be exciting because this is gonna be a safe space for us to innovate, to talk um, and, uh, and, uh, and to acknowledge uh, the folks um, online too who may be viewing this uh, across Turtle Island. Uh, we do welcome you as well. And feel free to participate. This should be an engaging uh, uh, next uh, step of, uh, of our, of our uh, workshop today. So just a little bit of an agenda to set expectations. So we're going to start talking about, you know, what is Indigenous entrepreneurship um, um, and kind of outlining that a bit in this context, moving into introducing your business. So by the end of this first um, uh, first block, I guess, of the Future Journal Workshop, we're going to get everyone pitching to one another, and then we're going to give everyone an opportunity to come up here and pitch. So remember when I said, we're going to, we're going to get you out of your comfort zone. Part of being an entrepreneur is becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable in certain circumstances. You don't have to be an expert at everything. Um, and really, this is a way that you can start market valuing your idea, and it's really exciting. So trust me, um, we've had some really great sessions in the past with pitches, and you don't have to have a perfect pitch. It's about starting it. It's about beginning the process of articulating what your business is, who's behind it, who your best target market is, and, uh, and how you can do that in a uh, succinct manner um, so that you can start communicating your business. Because really, at the end of the day, um, that, that's, that's how you're going to be reaching markets, making sales, and, and ultimately bringing uh, revenues back into the business. Um, we're going to move to the validation map. So everyone should look into their uh, packages from see if there's a validation map. If you're online, uh, one way you can prepare for the validation map, you just take a blank piece of paper. You know, uh, I, I always remember this from preschool, I don't know why. Hold it hot dog and hamburger style um, to make four quadrants, um, uh, thanks to, uh, to Miss Debbie and um, for that. But mainly we want four quadrants and we're going to be separating them into some key sections we'll be going through. So uh, just get prepared for having four quadrants and, and uh, we'll explain that later. Uh, and then we're going to talk about next steps. So uh, making sure that we're kind of following up on today. But at least today we're going to leave with something. You know, there's, um, you know, there's a, you 
you know, a common kind of statistic that, that shows that, you know, once you put a goal down on paper, once you start writing, once you start putting pen to paper, you know, you're exponentially um, uh, more likely to follow through on those goals. Uh, you know, we've already started the process of building out your business plan. So you're going to have a little bit of a takeaway, a little bit of uh, interaction today that's going to be great. And that's going to be, uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, thanks to you, that's going to be a great session today. And I have one power today. I have the power of awkward silence, okay? There's one way we can defeat the power of awkward silence and that's participating and uh, I will use that power. So if you hear a dead silence, you know, I can lean into that pretty nicely. Um, if you wanna break that dead silence, let's participate, let's get involved, let's interact with one another um, and trust me, I'm pretty good at it. So I don't have any problem with that, um, but let's let's get involved. But first I just wanna introduce you to our uh, ISP team. So we have our director, uh, national director. So we're a national organization. I'll go into a little bit more about us in a second here, but uh, our, our, our director is Halia Dukite. Uh, she's based out of Calgary, Alberta. Um, she's our national director for uh, our ISP program, our Indigenous Entrepreneur Startup Program. Um, we have Melissa Gladue, uh, who covers Alberta and BC, as well as the Yukon, um, in terms of the territory region, regions. Uh, she, um, she's, uh, she can be reached as well. Myself, I cover Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Nunavut, um, uh, and a bit of the territories as well. I share that with Melissa. And, uh, and we have Jason who covers Ontario East. And then once you apply, we have a, we have a dedicated Indigenous um, entrepreneur, uh, client relationship manager who helps you get your documentation together, helps you finalize your business plan and cash flow, really make sure that you're gonna be set up for success when you go into the adjudication process and hopefully get that approval. Um, so that's our team. And uh, please make sure that uh, one thing you can also do is just go on the Future Printer website and register right away. That's instead of us you know, giving you a, uh, 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 like one of our business cards, it's better to just go on our website, register, because we'll reach out to you based on your location and region. Um, so a little bit about us, Futurepreneur Canada has been, uh, you know, fueling the entrepreneurial passions of uh, Canada's young uh, young enterprises for two decades. Um, we're the only national nonprofit organization that provides financing, mentorship, and supports uh, support tools for aspiring business uh, owners between the ages of 18 and 39. So we're really focusing on um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the younger generation that may not have, you know, the networks or, or the experience or, you know, the capital uh, re required to start a business. And we really, um, you know, support them in terms of, if you can remember anything about Futurepreneur, we provide financing and mentorship. And I'll go into that in a second. Uh, some of the statistics, you know, we've launched over uh, 13,000 businesses um, over, over a period of time. Um, you know, uh, you know, more, majority of our businesses are uh, are, um, are 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 you know based um, are you know your mom and pop shops, but we also have some um, really innovative uh, businesses coming through future as well. But you know these are the statistics. I won't read them all out because um, I'm sure uh, all of you came here to listen to statistics today. Am, am I right? Yeah, exactly. I like I like that. Okay, so going into the um, going into the startup program quickly before we dive in, I just want to give you an idea of what future is all about. So our full-time startup program is for entrepreneurs who are, are ready to take or willing to take their business on full-time. Um, so it's mainly, think of it as this way, this business is gonna be my full-time source of income within the next 12 months. So if that's you, if you're ready to go, if you're fired up, then uh, the startup program would be uh, would be a good option for you or the right option, I should say, your home of best fit. Um, so it's up to $60,000 of working capital financing that's unsecured. So that means is that you don't need to have an asset um, or if the items that you purchase with us, um, let's say you get a skid here, we won't secure that asset um, against our loan. So in the case of um, you know default, we won't be recovering that asset from you, but it also gives you an opportunity um, to, um, to, uh, to, to, to work with other uh, lenders like C for Community Futures um, who may want first charge on assets or, or capital costs that you may have. It is a character-based loan, so um, you know it will severely affect your credit if you do default on your loan. Similar to if you weren't to pay a, a credit card payment, um, um, it will you know severely affect your credit. But it's a character-based loan, so it's important that you also look into your personal credit history as well. You have some of the best interest rates on the market, so all of our uh, loans right now are sub 10% interest rates. Uh, the feature printer portion is 7.7% um, right now, so it's CIBC Prime plus 3%. Uh, you can all check these. More details on more you know minute details on our on our website and then a meeting with me and then the BDC portion is um, 8.5 or uh, 45 percent and these are unsecured loans which is 
unheard of for you know uh you know quote unquote riskier businesses that haven't started yet haven't got any cash flows just yet or maybe they just you know don't have their first year financials you know these are incredible i used to work in you know traditional banking at rdc and um and and they're just not um designed to support um, entrepreneurs at these stages where we are and we're looking for those type of entrepreneurs um it's a five-year repayment schedule so it means it's amortized over five years so within five years you, you should be able to pay back the full amount of the loan and it's interest only payments for the first year so what that means is that um, instead of paying interest and principal you're going to have a, a whole year of only interest payments uh, to allow you to kind of uh, to give you some more uh, runway and, and let the rubber hit the road let some cash flows get into your business let you get you know establish those client relationships and hopefully by year two um, you, you have things kind of on the on the go and, and then the interest and principal payments come in then. And one of the best aspects of our uh, of our program is you get matched with a mentor for two years after disbursement. So you can take anywhere from five thousand, which is a minimum loan requirement, to uh, to sixty thousand dollars and anywhere in between, and you'll be matched with a mentor for two years. So that's going to be um, an entrepreneur themselves. Uh, someone who has, uh, you know, who hopefully in the same industry as you and has at least around 10 years of experience, we try to find um, or more, or an industry professional with, uh, you know, 10 to 15 years of experience in their field and are an industry expert in a related kind of topic that might be good for you. So examples would be, you know, a supply chain expert, um, uh, you know, someone who's strong in sales and marketing, you know, some uh, bookkeeping services. I help the construction business that you know, is great at the operation side of things, administration and back end. Not so much. So we got him a mentor with NMP, and uh, he was able to have a you know uh, someone with that expertise and, and really kind of someone who can help round out your skill set as a new entrepreneur. Right? You don't need to be an expert at everything, but it's good to build what I call your tribe of mentors. You know, you shouldn't just have one mentor. You should have a tribe of mentors, and uh, we'll help you you know get that initial one so you can start expanding if you don't already have a good a good um, a good group uh, of mentors or tribe of mentors. I like to see. Um, so uh, before moving on to our uh, side hustle program, which I'm excited about as well, and uh, and shout out to uh, Community Futures, who is uh, on the verge of launching their side hustle program. So make sure you reach out to them. Uh, it sounds like they're gonna have some great workshops upcoming. Um, and then we can come in and support that program as well. But does anyone have any questions around uh, the startup program at all right now? And feel free to, we don't have to get figured out. Yes, my friend. Are you um, that that's a great question. So, um, so for the future, so to late to explain the sixty thousand, how it works is that futurepreneur, you'll be eligible anywhere between five thousand um, to twenty thousand, provided the business plan, cash flow, and your and your personal credit kind of align with the eligibility criteria. But you'll be eligible between you know five thousand to twenty thousand with futurepreneur, and then what BDC does is they'll match that either one to one. So if we lend you twenty thousand, they can lend you twenty thousand. Um, or two to one. So that's where the 60,000 comes from. So if, you, if you're eligible for the full amount with Futurepreneur, let's say $20,000, EDC will match that two to one. So, you know, twice the amount that Futurepreneur uh, is able to provide up to 40,000. Um, and that's where our full 60 comes from. So it's two, two loan segments. Um, but um, to answer your question, the Futurepreneur portion, so the, the five to the, uh, 20,000 there, there is no prepayment charge on that portion. With the BDC portion, there's the three month um, interest, uh, 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 future interest charges on there for a prepayment there. So just you just calculate three months in advance in terms of interest charges, and then that's what you that's would be the cost there. Yeah. Yeah. And we have entrepreneurs who only take with the future loan, uh, loan, loan amount. Uh, you don't need to go through BDC, but it's a great way to start building a relationship with BDC, starting to kind of build your client risk index, creating that relationship. So when you're looking to expand, they know who you are. You have a great uh, like loan repayment history. You're starting to build relationships with financial institutions, and every financial institution looks at that relationship. That's how you get pre-approvals, things like that. Um, they they look at your repayment history, and it starts to build that kind of profile. So it's good to build that relationship early on in the business, and and starting to build that business credit history. So any questions in, in relation to the starter program? Cool. And uh, feel free if anything pops up later, just for sure ask me. So moving into the uh, Moving into the side hustle program, um, so the side hustle program is for a part-time business. So that means that you have to have some type, of some uh, a form of full-time household income. So that could be a mixture of you working part-time and then a partner in the household or a group of individuals in the household are bringing in, you know, the full-time household income that we're looking for. Um, you know, or if you're working full-time and you have a side hustle program, as long as there's, uh, as long as you're not relying on the side hustle to meet your subsistence needs, um, then uh, then that's what we're looking for. Uh, the side hustle should be a supplemental. Income to the household. 
um, or yourself. So it'd be a part-time business. Just think about part-time business. Um, and uh, you can access anywhere between uh, five to $15,000 for your startup. And there's lots of startups you can get up uh, uh, with that amount. You'd be surprised. Um, it's a character-based loan again. So we do look at your personal credit history. Um, it's going to be a four-year repayment sch uh, schedule. So you'll be able to repay it within four years. It used to be three, but we wanted to give a little bit more runway for entrepreneurs in those, in those startup stages. And, and lower the, 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 the costs in terms of, um, you know, the, the month to month fees. If it's shorter, usually the principal amounts are a little bit higher. Uh, it's interest, interest only payments um, uh, for the first year uh, as well. And, uh, and it's based on disposable income to the service alone. So, you know, that makes sure of household income and the, and, the, and, the, and the side hustle itself supporting the loan is important. And, uh, and one of the beautiful parts about this program as well is, um, is uh, you still get a mentor for two years after disbursement. So let's say that you have a business idea, you're not ready to dive in feet first yet, uh, you wanna dip your toes in entrepreneurship and still wanna mentor, we'll still provide you with a mentor for two years after disbursement, which is excellent. And how that works is uh, you'll essentially meet with a mentor uh, monthly um, uh, and uh, up to three to four hours a month. And that's gonna be uh, over the next 24 months. It's gonna be great for goal setting, it's good for networking, it's good for that support system. Um, and it's going to be an expert in the field that hopefully that you've chosen. So you actually describe to us what type of mentor you're looking for based on what your gaps or maybe some supports you're looking for. And we'll uh, match you with our pool. Uh, we have a mentorship associate team whose whole role is helping you match and, uh, and meet with a great mentor and making sure that relationship is, is, uh, is, is maintained. Um, so I don't want to dive too much in the program because I want to get into the workshop and we can always cover that in our one-on-one -on -one meeting. But uh, does anyone have any questions about the side hustle program? The one thing I should mention is for both programs, like for the startup program, we need a business plan, we need a cash flow, and then we will pull your per personal credit history. For the side hustle program, it's not as, I would say, intensive in terms of you don't need to write out a full out business plan. Um, we have what's called a business brief, which is really a condensed business plan, but you still need to have the two-year cash flow projection, which we can all support you with. You're not doing this on your own. We have workshops and other resources that we can provide to you. Um, uh, and a personal credit history for that one. Uh, for the side hustle program, it's only futurepreneur loan facility. So there is no BDC in the side hustle program. Um, but any questions on that regard? No? Okay. Um, so it's important to, to think about it um, before you start a business. It's a, it's a personal uh, endeavor. You wanna make sure that you're clearing the deck on a personal front because you as the business owner is going to have to, you know, focus on the uh, operations of the business, getting everything set up. So you want to also think about, you know, preparing your relationships around you as a new entrepreneur. You know, it's, um, it's, uh, you know, have a good support system to make sure that your family uh, knows what your your journey is going to be, um, that they're, they're they're involved, and that's not there's not going to be you know, surprises down the line. Um, and it's important to kind of have those household discussions around budgeting and and living a little bit more lean within those first uh, couple of years. Um, because you know it's it's it is a challenge to be an entrepreneur. You know it's 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 amazing. It you know it has a lot of rewards, but there is challenges, and you want to make sure that your your family's on board and you're preparing relationships with that. Um, start to think about reducing unnecessary expenses. You know you're going to have to live a little bit more lean if you're going to be um, starting off a business, at least for the first you know two to three years. Um, you know usually if you get past that five year mark, you're kind of what they, what they kind of call the valley of, of death potentially within the first one to five years. That's where a lot of businesses succeed or fail. So you want to be able to kind of prepare, make sure that you start, uh, you know, preparing for savings right away. If you have to cash inject into the business and making sure that you're also preparing in terms of savings, if you need to get, you know, a 10, 10 or 20% equity requirement um, for a loan with, with C for other, uh, with other lenders, know your sustenance number. So what I say is, you know, if you want to, you know, maintain, you know, we're not saying like live in, uh, you know, famine and, 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 and poverty in terms of your business, but know what you need to do to like maintain, you know, minimum the, uh, the maximum, and like the good life, like make sure that you're budgeting in enough for your, your, for your kids and they know, like know what your, the minimum amount of income you need to be bringing into the household to keep a roof over your head, to keep the utilities going, you know, to have, uh, 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 you know, enough groceries, like have a number. Uh, do a budget. It starts personally. So have a personal budget and then we'll start to build the business around that to make sure that, um, you know, it's all part of the plan. Um, and really, you know, if I can say one thing, I've had, I have, you know, five, you know, actually five to 10 files. They have a business plan. They have a cash flow. They have an idea. They're actually making sales, some of them. But uh, when it comes to credit, that's actually uh, uh, in 
inhibiting us from applying. So what we want to do is when you apply, we want to pull credit at the most optimal time, right? So it's important to kind of uh, look into your credit early. I would say it's like going to the doctors. Not everyone, you know, no one's excited to go to the doctors ever, right? You're, you know, it can be scary. You don't want to find anything wrong. But when you go, usually you, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're, you're pleasantly surprised in the sense that it wasn't as bad as you thought, or there's um, specific steps that you can take um, to improve your health. So think of your credit as your own personal health. There's steps you can take to improve your health. Um, and either, you know, uh, more times than not, it's a thin credit history, meaning that you don't have enough credit established, or maybe you've made a mistake. Maybe there's a phone bill. Maybe there's something in collections you didn't know about. Maybe there's an error on your credit report that you didn't know about. And there's steps we can take to correct that and start to rebuild your credit history. So don't be discouraged by that. Just maybe be aware and, and, and proactively kind of look at that before you go. Yeah. So where do you pull your credit information from? Or yeah, you can. Uh, well, um, Equifax. Well, the only reason I'm asking that is because I I found this recently. Equifax. Yeah, I've actually heard of that. So one one thing you want to do is make sure you're reviewing that. The, sometimes one uh, credit report uh, agency will be has you know certain determinants on their on uh, like let's say uh, an account facility that the other one might not have. So it's important to look through your credit reports to see if there's any errors or anything that's discrepancy between the two. It's important. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, actually, from my experience, that is that that is the case at times. Um, one thing I would recommend is that um, to to reach out to the experts in, in terms of credit advice, and that would be the Credit Counseling uh, Society of Saskatchewan. So I think there's two offices based out of Regina and uh, and uh, Saskatoon. Um, so if you, if you just type in credit counseling society, they're able to kind of look at your credit, see if there's any discrepancies in there. Uh, really what you want to be looking at is, is there any collections? Is there anything that's missing, um, um, or, or, uh, you know, missed payments that I need to, uh, to, to kind of, uh, catch up on what's my debt utilization. So looking at how much, you know, based on, you know, what your credit limits are, are they all close to being maxed out or are they over their limit? Um, uh, those are things that all will affect your credit. So it's more about looking at what credit facilities do you have? What is your repayment history? Like, are you paying on time? And is there anything in collections? And if you can lower your debt utilization, meaning if you can get your, your, um, your facilities, you know, around, let's say 30% of their limit, then that's going to put you in a position to be, to have stronger, uh, credit in an application. Cause more of the times than not, we'll look at, we'll look at, uh, the actual accounts and how you're managing those accounts rather than the actual number itself. So the number is just an indicator of where it might be, but we look a little bit closer in the actual uh, reports of the credit. We look at, you know, how many credit checks are you doing in a month? Are you kind of credit seeking? So there's all of these different um, uh, um, individual indicators that could affect your credit negatively. And there's also errors that may happen. So that's why I said, like, let's go to the Credit Counseling Society of uh, Saskatchewan. They'll give you that advice. They'll start to create the plan. Um, I've had errors that I've found in credit reports or we found in credit reports that's, that's, that's helped them, uh, you know, uh, kind of correct those. So my best advice is kind of look into it uh, a little bit more. But I can tell you that Futurepreneur uses Equifax um, in terms of pulling our credit. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. So the question was, um, there's uh, there's discrepancies between what's for being reported in my Equifax and TransUnion report. I wouldn't say I'm an expert in terms of uh, the advice around that and why that may be the case. But my advice to uh, my advice to everyone also online is that if there's anything in terms of questions around your credit or how to establish credit, you know, how do I correct? How do I, you know, get supports around, you know, um, uh, errors that might be on my credit report? Uh, credit Counseling Society of Saskatchewan. Um, uh, they are experts, they're subject matter experts, and that's what we do here. Uh, all of our, all of our organizations, if we're not the subject matter experts, we'll recommend the, the ones and the people that you want to go to. Um, so hopefully that answers the question there. Um, so resources and supports. So, uh, resources and supports, 
Um, we have a business plan writer on our website that will take you through each step of the business plan um, and has tips and advice and examples. We have cash flow templates to help you uh, look at what you've had past purchases, your startup costs, and then your two-year cash flow projections. We'll support you through all of that. Um, we have an entrepreneurship pathway um, that will uh, kind of guide you through the ideation stage, you know, the market research stage, the building stage, and then the launch stage. So there's resources on there. Um, these are all on our website. So So if you just go to our resource section on our Futurepreneur website, there is all of these resources. There are entrepreneurship pathway um, that takes you through each stage of the business plan uh, or the business uh, uh, entrepreneurial journey. So developing, explore, build, launch. We also have our business plan writer on our website here and a plethora of other resources and articles. So if you're online or if you're looking to kind of uh, uh, get some resources later on online, go to our resource section uh, uh, below. And then in terms of our go to our get involved on our website. So we have our rock my business plan series, which will take you through the rock my business idea, which we'll dive in today, rock my business plan, and then rock my cash flow. So we have uh, three hour workshops that will support you through that with our entrepreneurs and residents. Um, uh, we also have a workshop with GoDaddy uh, that supports you with, um, with uh, it's brand new around building your online business. So make sure you sign up for that. And then um, we also have uh, entrepreneurial web, uh, entrepreneur and residence webinars that kind of give you those high level tips on how to get started in terms of your, in terms of your business plan. So check out our website, um, the financing and mentorship uh, section here, we'll go through all of our loan details and, and, uh, and, uh, and kind of the, the, the more frequently asked questions there. Um, but mainly if you want to get started in terms of our resources, just go to our resource tabs, explore that a little bit more. And we're able to collab collaborate with uh, AFIs like uh, Saskatchewan Indian Equity Foundation. If there's any Métis uh, entrepreneurs on the on the on the um, uh, online right now, we also collaborate with uh, Clarence Campbell Development Fund. But as Cree mentioned, in order to access the uh, equity contribution section there, they do need a commercial lender. We can be that commercial lender to support you in terms of that application. So uh, we're able to collaborate um, also with other organizations like Community Futures, which we have a great relationship, and really anyone who's uh, um, here to support an entrepreneurs. Uh, because we're collateral free, um, we don't compete with first charge on anything in terms of loans. So we're a great collaboration partner. Um, So quickly, I just want to run through what is Indigenous entrepreneurship? So really, quite simply, in, an Indigenous business, an Indigenous enterprise um, is a business that's 51% owned by um, uh, an Indigenous person. So, um, or let's say an Indigenous community. So First Nations, Métis, or Inuit. Um, and, and that can mean a lot of different things um, in terms of how that business looks. Some There's businesses I've worked with where their mission statement, their values, you know, their, their, their marketing campaigns, they're all grounded in, you know, traditional or indigenous uh, kind of context in terms of how they're marketing their business. So they're, you know, taking a concerted effort to market themselves as an indigenous business. And that's part of their business model and, 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 and kind of their sales strategy. But there's also indigenous businesses that don't identify as indigenous, um, you know, own businesses that they're more focused on the products and services that they're providing, but they happen to be owned by majority owned by indigenous business owner. And there's businesses in the spectrum in between. So just because you're an indigenous, you know, entrepreneur, you're a majority owner of an uh, indigenous business, it doesn't mean that you have to ground everything in there. But I, you know, quite honestly, we are able to provide, you know, social purpose and innovation to business models out there. And I've seen it. So don't be afraid to bring traditional values into your mission, mission statement um, um, and, and ground it in terms of um, where you come from and and it's a and it's a great opportunity to kind of get that community support as well but just know that you don't need to be grounding your whole business idea in in the fact that you're an indigenous entrepreneur um, um but it is uh, it's a good important conversation to have and and kind of think about where you want to position yourself so um but i do want to talk about the resurgence of entrepreneurs indigenous entrepreneurship in in uh, across turtle island and it's important to recognize this that everyone in this room is a part of this resurgence the fact that and and online the fact that you're taking the time out of your day to take part in this workshop um you should be proud of you should be excited because you're part of a movement right now 
And this movement um, is not new. It's important to recognize that Indigenous economies existed long before there was uh, a Canada. Um, we've always been trading. You know, a lot of the times our relationships with other nations was, was based around our trading relationships. You know, if we weren't trading with other nations, um, you know, that would be, you know, a sign of, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a lack of relationships. So we've always been, you know, entrepreneurial in the sense, maybe we didn't we use the word entrepreneur, maybe we didn't use the ideation around businesses, but we've always been uh, in, 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 in the uh, practice of trading. Um, um, and, uh, and we've always had Indigenous economies uh, before there was a Canada. So that's why I say that's why I like to say there's a resurgence of uh, indigenous entrepreneurship in this country, um, and meaning that indigenous business owners are growing at five times the rate of self-employed Canadians. That's super exciting, right? Like we're we're not only changing the landscape for our communities and our families, but we're also changing the landscape of what it means to do business in this country and the different values that we're bringing to the table in terms of so, uh, social purpose businesses that do take into account the environment. Like uh, almost every business I've worked with has some kind of community aspect or measurement to it. So it's really exciting to see the influence that we're going to be having um, in corporate Canada, which really moves the needle in terms of what's going to be changing you know, the landscape of Canada. In this country, Indigenous women are starting businesses at twice the rate of non-Indigenous women. So shout out to all our Indigenous women who are kind of the pillars of our community. And uh, and they're really showing, um, you know, our youth and, and the next generation that uh, that uh, that you can get into business. You can be a leader. And, and we're actually doing it at twice the rate of non-Indigenous women. And what I want to show you is this is um, this is an excerpt from uh, Caroline, uh, Caroline Hilton's Indigenomics. A book which I recommend everyone go read. It's incredible. Like if you see me walking around with it, I have like a million stickies sticking out of it. Um, but this is the hockey stick growth curve. Uh, so what that means is that our indigenous economies, uh, our indigenous business owners, our, our, our businesses are growing at an exponential rate. So just in 2001, we had a, uh, we provided 11.68 billion dollars to the Canadian economy, and just in you know a short 15 years, we uh, you know almost tripled that to. Um, 32 billion in 2016. And if we grow at this rate, if we continue this this uh, this grow, growth rate, we're going to have a hundred billion dollar indigenous market potential. And that's what that's what Caroline uh, Hilton talks about in Indigenomics is the potential for a hundred billion dollar market, which would be one of the largest, you know, markets or industries in all of Canada. Let's say if you were to compare it against, you know, um, other industries or, or related kind of, um, um, uh, you know, commerce uh, um, uh, markets, I guess you could say so. All everyone here can be taking part of that hundred billion dollar market potential. So the fact you're starting now, you can also you know grow and, and be able to capture that. So that's super exciting, and I think everyone here should you know be excited. And for that matter, let's give everyone in the room a round of applause for being here today. This is the middle of the week, you know, this you're taking time out of the day to take part in this, and you're all part of this journey here. So that's super exciting. Quickly, um, some entrepreneurs who went through our program. So a uh, local, uh, you know, incredible entrepreneur, matriarch in our community um, is Devin Fiddler. She she launched She Native Goods. She's out of Waterhen First, uh, First Nations, Saskatchewan. Um, she launched She Native Goods, which is a, a brand of handbags and accessories de dedicated to elevating um, our, uh, our uh, Indigenous women and girls. She's also a speaker, influencer, thought leader, program developer, um, entrepreneur, all of the above. Um, uh, she's an amazing entrepreneur and we actually worked with her, helped her get her business off the ground in collaboration with other of our other amazing partners. Another well-known uh, Saskatchewan entrepreneur that you may know is Kendall Netmaker. So when Kendall Netmaker uh, first started Nietzsche Gear, he actually went through Futurepreneur. We helped him with his business plan. We helped him with financing. We got him a mentor for two years and look where he is today. He's founded and invested five businesses. You know, he's an author, you know, he's a speaker. Um, he's, he, he's just uh, an amazing example of where you can take one business and maybe like, you know, Nietzsche Gear is an amazing business, but if you see, like, you can become a serial entrepreneur, right? You, you start to learn from each business and, and, and successive um, uh, venture that you may be looking into. And you never know where it's going to take you. So Kendall Netmaker is another entrepreneur, and we have many more. But uh, for that matter, we want to kind of dive into the interactive part. So everyone, let's get excited. We're going to get a little bit. If your hands are as clammy as mine right now, it's because you're a little bit nervous, but that's good right? That's excitement. That's the start of something that that's good about to happen, right? And what that good thing is, you're going to start pitching your idea, you're going to start market validating, which means that 
does what your can you articulate what your business is in a succinct matter so that if you're in an elevator with someone and they said, Hey, what's your name? How you doing? You're able to say, Oh yeah, my name's this. Um, this is my business. This is my target. Market. You're able to explain what your business is in a succinct way so that if that person walks away and they, and maybe they might not be the best customer, but they can think in the Rolodex of context and say, you know what? I met an amazing person today. Um, you know, my niece actually would really love your stuff. I'm going to mention that to her and, and they might go check out your website. So it's about articulating your business. It's really, uh, what the first step is all about. Um, so we're going to talk about introducing your business. So, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to start off by, um, getting you to work in groups. So we're already, uh, kind of in groups of, uh, of four to five, uh, or three to four, which is good. As long as you're kind of able to interact with, uh, new, uh, newer, uh, individuals that you haven't met before. And what we're going to start to do. So until, um, Oh yeah, we got plenty of time. So for the first 15 minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes, we are going to work on crafting our pitch and sharing it with um, sharing with everyone around us. Oops, sorry, what's going on here? So what I want everyone to do is Um, but okay. So I want everyone to, uh, uh, get into groups of four or five check. We've already done that. And, oh, weird. It's on. Sorry. I was looking at my laptop. I wasn't even looking behind me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to craft an effective pitch. So an elevator pitch, a pitch that you're able to articulate your business within, you know, let's say 90 seconds, 60 to 90 seconds. If you want to practice your power pitch for next year, or maybe you're going on to the finals or something like that, this is a great way to start. Um, and it's a super important part of your business because if you can't communicate what your business is, who you are, and uh, who your target market is, you're going to have a really hard time in terms of your sales and marketing strategy, which is really the, 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 the lifeblood in terms of your business and the activities you're going to do to bring cash flows or revenue into your business, um, which is, which is ultra critical. So what we're going to do is let's get started. Um, uh, three guidelines to craft a, an effective pitch. So start with who you are. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Get them, get the individual you're talking to, 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 uh, to start buying into you before the product, right? Get them to understand what your background and experience and passions are, um, and why that might relate to your product and service. So a lot of people like to have that authentic authenticity around small businesses, a really support local movement around here. They want to know who the business owners are. They want to know who's behind the, the product or service. So start with yourself. What do people get? Tell us succinctly what your product and service is, right? But don't be too broad. So if you're selling, you know, um, if you're selling clothing, well, don't say I sell uh, clothing um, and for indigenous peoples. And what sets me apart is I do graphic design on the front. We want you to be specific. You want you you want to be even dive into deeper. So I create um, indigenous uh, or I think I, I create clothing uh, specifically in indigenous women's wear uh, focusing on yoga. Um, and, uh, it's primarily looking at, um, uh, my customers would be, you know, indigenous women and, and non-indigenous women between the ages of, uh, let's say 21 and 35 who are looking to take part in yoga, um, uh, and, and have, uh, an indigenous branding behind it. Um, maybe she's in university. So you start to kind of build out, um, uh, an idea and what sets us apart is that we provide, um, sustainable clothing. Um, that's, that takes into account fast fashion and, uh, and we, we provide incredible graphics designed by a local indigenous entrepreneur on our products. So you want to get specific. You don't want to keep broad. The more specific you get, the better. Um, and what this is going to do is it's going to show you, like, you might have an idea of how to pitch your business, but once you actually try to do it to other individuals, you're going to be like, Whoa, this is actually hard. Um, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but what I want everybody to do is start right now, start to pitch your idea, go around the room, start maybe with your uh, uh, alphabetical order. If we, if we, if we're not if we're kind of waiting around for how to start. So let's get that. So remember, tell us who you are. What do people get? What is your product and service? Be specific. Who's your best customer, right? Not no, everyone can't be your best customer, right? It's going to be a select group of people, whether it's another business, so business to business, or maybe it's direct to consumer business to consumer, but tell us who your best customer is. If you've made sales in the past, try to figure out who keeps, what kind of demographic keeps coming back in terms of your sales. And what sets you apart, right? Um, so for example, I always use this example. So if everyone sees this, this kind of raggedy uh, 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 beaded lanyard I have here, right? So 
I could go to a market and let's say that um, someone's selling a beaded lanyard, right? What set, what could set someone else apart is that I create beaded lanyards that won't fray for at least three years guaranteed. So maybe there was some innovation you created in terms of beading and it prevents fraying for, for three years and, and you're going to provide a guarantee. That's what's going to separate you from the other beaters in the market. Find something that's going to separate you and don't try not to do it on price. Try to find a quality or, uh, or service aspect that's really going to set you apart. And it's going to give you an opportunity to talk about something other than price with your clients. So what sets you apart? Or just tell us what, what's one thing awesome about it. If you're totally new to entrepreneurship, if you don't know, you know uh, what your idea is, maybe just share with the, with the, with the group. Um, what does indigenous entrepreneurship mean to you? Because it means you define everyone in this room is helping define what indigenous entrepreneurship means. So without further ado, let's get into the group. Let's get uh, active. So, um, and let's start pitching. And then within 15 minutes, I'm going to ask at least one person from each group to come up here and pitch. Okay. And, uh, and this is going to be exciting. Trust me, this is going to be fun. And I do always get some people up here. It's like what I like to say, it's like the, the, uh, I was talking about this the other day. It's like the it's like the um, the snack the snack spread at a family event. Everyone's staring at the snacks, and then as soon as one person grabs some snacks, everyone's ready to go and dive in there. It's the same thing with the pitch. Once we have that first pitcher, everyone's going to give it a shot because this is a safe space. This is a place where we can learn and and learn from one another and actually start to kind of start, uh, take place on that. So everyone, let's get together. Let's start pitching our businesses to one another and and. Keep it in, you know, four simple steps. Who you are, what is your product and service, who's your target market, and what sets you apart? What's one awesome thing about it? Um, and we'll and by the end of the session, we'll refine all of these areas, right? This is a this is kind of your baseline. This is the C where you're at. Okay. So let's get to it. And uh, I will be back here in yeah, about uh 10, uh, 10, 15 minutes. So keep it to 90 seconds. If you feel yourself ranting, uh, which happens all the time, you're passionate about what you do hone it in, try to close it in, right? Because you don't want to be on the street and someone's trying to walk away and you're still kind of talking about your business. Try to keep it, try to keep it succinct. Okay. So 90 seconds to two minutes at the most, keep it succinct. Let's go around the table and let's pitch our, uh, pitch our businesses. I'll be walking around and see if anyone has any questions. Okay. Alrighty. <clears throat> and if you're online, um, maybe pitch to someone in the room, pitch to your mom, pitch to your dad, uh, pitch to a sister. Um, uh, Start to kind of work on that. Pitch to yourself in the mirror, okay? Uh, and uh, and kind of get comfortable with that. So let's start pitching, everyone. All right, there we go, you guys. I figured out the audio and what was going on, and I do apologize. Uh, like I said before, I guess you really couldn't hear me when I was speaking these before. Sometimes you just got to be ready for anything that comes at you. And, um, you know, I do have a checklist of what I do when I do start these lives. And I did follow it, but I forgot the one step. Because I restarted this live. That's why, anyway, it was a button. It was a stupid button. I forgot to just switch. So I hope you guys are enjoying that right now. But you can participate, if you would like, online. Let me hold on. Sorry. Right there, room introduction. If you want to do your own breakout, and these are good little tools to to get you going. If you want to start, uh, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, these are just little things you are, are have to do. And before I did mention before, and I was telling Tyson that you know, when we were sitting here, there were people at uh, yeah, the presenters were saying, "Is there any questions?" And no one answered. No one asked it. Like I get it. You are shy. You're nervous. But uh, yeah, thank you guys. It is much better. Um, you know, there, there's you have to be uh, get outside of your comfort zone to if you want to become an entrepreneur. Number one, you have to get outside of your comfort zone because when you are your own business, you 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 have to be ready for anything. Uh, uh, you know, you know, sometimes there's going to be an extra bill, so you got to you know say you don't have enough money in the account, so you got to learn how to hustle your product to uh, get more money, or you got to learn how to go to you know speak to guys like Noah and uh, Steve too to find more money or you know if, if you want to start marketing you you know it's 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 you got to brave to be the brave to do that one post that oh my god it's my company you know and i don't know if anyone's you know you're not too sure about a post that you're about to send <laughs> you just got to do it there's a lot of things you got to do uh when it comes to entrepreneurship but number one is getting out of your comfort zone and, and learn to experience new things and i would not be where i am today 
you know, if it wasn't me learning to get out of my comfort zone, you know, this all started how IOP started. If you're wondering how this whole thing started with me, you know, I do have a website called IOPS.ca, which is a job board, you know, an indigenous job board that I created, uh, you know, in 2012 from a Facebook group where I just, I called it First Nations Employment Opportunity. Well, I called it and it grew and then all of a sudden I had like 17,000 in this group and and uh, now it's like I have a website and then I created these live, I've created a podcast to bring eyes to the website, you know, to kind of promote it and, you know, do a little podcast and, you know, get people to watch, watch, look at my website. But now this whole thing of me live and, and showcasing, you know, Indigenous entrepreneurship workshops and I've done powwows, I've done uh, youth conferences. You know, it's kind of like uh, how Noah is saying, you come, sometimes you become a serial entrepreneur and that's kind of what I'm doing. Like get what the entrepreneur's uh, bug is. You know, I do, I just currently bought a driving range with my sister as well. You know, you just start getting to all these things. You don't want to overwhelm yourself at the same time, too. But, uh, you know, it's like I said, it's it's good to learn new things. It's getting out of your comfort zone. Tyson here. Tyson, I figured out the volume thing. I forgot to do one little button. But, you know, getting Tyson on on here, you know, he just said he didn't like doing it. But, you know, he he, he's, he, he wants to become, uh, get his EAL program. What is it? How's it go? Here, you want to come on real quick? I'm going to get him back on here, and uh, we're going to chit-chat here with Tyson, who's going to become an entrepreneur. He wants to become one. So yeah, like what have you learned so far? Like with Mo, he's done a he's been a good presenter so far. Like what have you learned? Like remember I was saying uh, I had to come out here to do and that's what he said, right? And, and that's what I was telling her. Like you have to learn how to do stuff you never know when you're gonna do before to get your business out there in marketing. What kind of things do you think you could do? Like, let's do this little timetable thing. So the breakout session, you're not in one of those tables. So we're going to do one online with you guys. Who's ever watching. So we're going to do one here. We're going to put, I'm going to be with Tyson and you guys as well. So right now, there's three guidelines. Three guidelines to craft an effective pitch. Authenticity is key. So let's talk about your EAs. Okay. I want to know who you are. All right. So the number one, who are you? So how how can you get me to buy your product? Which is yeah. Pretend I don't know anything about it. No, it didn't. Pretend I don't know anything about it. But sometimes you're going to be put on the spot. Yeah. Right? And this is the perfect time to like train your brain. And like when I, when you do live, like back to these lives, like it helps you think quick, right? You're always on the, you're always thinking kind of like five steps ahead of where this conversation is going to go, how to guide it, right? It's kind of done the same thing of when you're put on the spot with a business. You're going to be put in all these scenarios. And once you start getting through all these scenarios and then you start repeating, it's like practice makes perfect, right? So once you're in these scenarios, you're going to learn how to just, you know, what if I come to you, okay, I only have $500. Then you already know how to answer that question, how to utilize it when it's going towards your business, which is EAL. So sell me, sell me EAL. Tell me how you, what is EAL first? And else EAL. Some obstacles where 
people will be blindfolded. So you're relying on your partner and the horse to get you through that obstacle course. Or where we have a, where there's no, you can't speak, there's no communication. It's just basically hand signals. Or your partner will demonstrate how to go through an obstacle. But then you go to put the horse in your hand. Okay. My daughter is scared of horses. She got fucked up and she barely goes on horses and she got fucked up. I'm going to do it. How are you guys going to fuck Well, I have a horse that will match up with anybody. But there's no riding on my, on my program. There's no riding. So it's just. And when we first get the kids, I run them through all the safety. Or to stand, how to lead the horse, so your feet don't get stepped on, or I will give you a horse that's gonna drag you down the arena. So you're trying to, you're basically, you don't need no horse experience. You know so I can walk in there, city boy, but I don't do any horse for anything. Um, so I can walk in there. And I don't have to worry. You're gonna take care of me. I don't have to worry about getting hurt because we're not riding horses. All right. Well, I will be right beside you the whole time. I try to match. We try to match. When we got a group of kids, one one adult or one instructor per group of kids. So one to one. Oh, two to one. Yeah, two to one. So that way, something does come up, the horse gets stuck, and there's someone there yeah. to help you out. Because you don't want the kid to let go of the horse. All right, I'm not working. I've got three kids. And then, uh, you know, it's going to come. I know you charge. I'm just, he doesn't, I don't know what he charged the guy, I'm going to say five dollars. I'm just going to say that. So I have three kids. If you take a payment plan, I can only afford. $800 for all three kids. Now, putting them on the spot because you guys got to realize you got to be ready for these situations, right? Any kind of situation, and that is a lot of situations that I've come into my business that people always want. I can't afford you. I don't know what would you do. Well, for me, I know a lot of guys have been going to France to get into it. I don't, I know for myself, I don't. Charge I'm just trying to get known. But just pretend you charge 500 bucks for a kid. I have three kids, that's 1500 bucks, and I only have $800. Yeah, for the month? For a 12 week program? Or yeah. Let's just say for the month, you charge 1500 bucks for all three kids, and I only have $800. You hey, I'm putting you because we everyone needs to know what they're doing, right? You know what? You need to understand. I'll interview you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. How do you think you should? And, and no right answer, no wrong answer, no right answer. It, it, this is all in training because we're all doing this right now. If you guys are watching right now, because we're just kind of putting in some, uh, a breakout session. Uh, for some reason, didn't go into one of these uh, little groups we so now I'm putting them on here. Uh, for myself, I try to make it people do this and actually learn even more. And all the kids, the kids are enjoying themselves. So let's go right there. Let's stop there, right? So word of mouth, right? Exactly what you said. So sometimes you gotta, you gotta look at like even two, three, four months into the future, even a year into the future. With this spot, right? So like, okay, one is kids probably. Two, can you afford that seven hundred dollar loss? And three, will this actually help you market further down the line? So you take that seven hundred dollar loss, 
and you look at it individually per person. You look at this guy, you kind of say, okay, who is this guy? Right? Who does he know? Who is he going to tell? So if this guy goes and says, blah, 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 to Tyson and the AL program, help me out, and he tells 15 people, all those 15 people, those guys start friends. You know, so it's like a butterfly effect. So by the time he, everyone's done telling who you are, you treat, say, 200 people. And out of those 200 people, say you get even five more kids, which equates to $2,500. So now you took that $700 loss and actually made $1,800. Right? Does yeah. that make sense? It makes sense. So sometimes in those situations, you have to just play it through your head. And sometimes it's not going to work out how you play it through your head, right? This guy will just be like, yeah, I'm not telling anyone, right? And then, you know, but at the same time, you're working with the kids and it's pretty cool. Right? Yeah. But uh, at the same time, too, it might work out where this guy is going to tell a bunch of people but that's individually that's like it's, it's like uh it's like each individual case all right okay something to think about so we have uh we have lunch at, at 12 p.m so what we're gonna do is um uh i want everyone to nominate at least one person who's pitched at the table um, we might go a little bit into lunch because I think this is an important aspect of this is getting an opportunity of everyone getting out of their comfort zone. So we'll go into like, uh, yeah, we have about uh, five to 10 minutes um, max. So keep your pitches succinct, right? Let's try to get, if we, if everyone has a pitch that's between 90 seconds and two minutes, we can get quite a few pitches in it. And so let's get this going. So who wants to break the ice? The power of awkward silence is about to be enforced here. So if you want to, if you want to break that. You just volunteer and pitch up here, give it an opportunity. Um, it's a way to kind of put yourself out there, work on selling and, and, and communicating your business. So who wants to go first? Aaron. All right, everyone give a round of applause. This is not easy. He's the first one that's going to be taking out of the snack so everyone can get going and get excited. So it's not easy to come up here. It's all learning. It doesn't need to be perfect, but uh, I'm really excited for Aaron's pitch. So uh, let's give Aaron another uh, a round of applause. And so basically you can come in, you can make an appointment, you get your nails done, um, you get your hair done, um, massage, anything like that, reflexology, anything along those areas, basically, um, to basically just get pampered. Um, our ideal demographic that we focus in on mostly would be young moms and working moms, uh, typically would be our greatest um, customers that come through on the daily. Um, thing about us that would make us different from everything else is that we are we're rural, you know, so we're in the middle of nowhere. So the closest place for anybody to go to get anything of those services done is roughly about a half an hour, 45 minute drive, you know. So with the cost of fuel and everything else that goes on in this day and age, um, you know, that gives us kind of a leg up in that area and allows us to provide services at an inexpensive rate. You know, so that's it. Woo! Excellent. The only thing I would have loved to just learn a little bit more about you, or Aaron. Remember, we want to we want to you know get them buying into you first because you're charismatic, um, and it was an authentic pitch. I think that's what was best about it. So he told us exactly what his product and service is. He works, and I and the fact I can articulate this right now is because it was a great pitch. It was succinct, um, and I'm able to relay this to anyone that's going to be living in your community or I know in the surrounding area. So it's a, a health and wellness, or it's a wellness center. 
um, that focuses on, on, on nails, pampering, um, and, uh, and really kind of just uh, 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 a refreshing experience. And who is the best for it? Well, it's for those hardworking mothers, you know, our pillars of our communities, the ones that you know, have two full-time jobs in terms of taking care of our youth and, and working in the community as well. And they need just some place to relax and, and refresh themselves. So those are gonna be the best customers. And this was a super important aspect. And really I want everyone to take away is he focused in on what was his competitive edge in terms of other salons or, or wellness centers um, that, that are in Saskatchewan. Convenience, you only need one value proposition to really set yourself apart. And sometimes being the closest um, and, uh, and most accessible service or, or product is, is, is what's gonna set them apart, right? Like who would wanna go to Saskatoon, get all relaxed and have to drive 40, 40 minutes back to their community? I know, I would know I would fall asleep on the road and it would be, it would be detrimental to everyone. So let's give them another round of applause. That was excellent, right? Okay? Um, well, I hope everyone doesn't mind. I really love the section of the, of the, of the, of the workshop. We might go a little bit into this because I want another picture. So we, we got into the snack. Everyone saw that someone took a snack. Everyone knows that it's now socially acceptable to take snacks and dive in and, and just get, get into it. So think of it that way. So who's going to go next? Who wants to be our next picture? This is a great example. You've been voluntold. All right. <laughs> Let's give it a round of applause. Let's give it a round of applause. This is not easy. You're going to be nervous. It's okay, right? This is where we learn to articulate our business. This is a safe space, remember? So um, this is exciting. And what was your name? Shalane. So everyone give Shalane a, a round of applause. Let's get to know her and what her business is. Um, my name's Shalane Meadow. Um, my band is from Attack Group, and I currently live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Um, my product is um, lashes, um, and I am doing goodie bags. So they come in all sizes, different lengths. So they're good for all ages of different women, um, and also the LGBT community. Um, but it's also good for men for gifts for their partners or their daughters. Um, great for the holidays. And the goodie bags are very pretty glitter packaging. They come with a tool, a brush, scrunchie, candy, uh, etc. What sets you apart from other lash? What sets me apart? Um, it's affordable, and I have this bundle bag, so it comes with different stuff inside, so it looks very appealing to the eye. Right on. Yeah, thank you. Right on. <laughs> Excellent. That excellent. So that was another great example of a great pitch. It was the same. We got an idea of who the best um, best customer is, or at the timing of customer. Uh, one of the things with target customers, what are those behaviors that you want people to start buying your your, your products or services? So we know that it's a lash and um, an esthetician kind of based business in terms of uh, um, uh, having the lash glue, having the tool, having the lashes all in a bundle, which sets it apart in terms of other than price, because we want to sell something of quality other than price, is that it's a one-stop kind of uh, gift package that uh, a gentleman like me that would be totally lost in terms of buying my significant other uh, gift in terms of lashes to do is go uh, go to your to your business, buy it all in one package for my significant other, or if I'm an indigenous woman or a woman um, or someone from the LGBTQ community, um, uh, this would be a great product for me too because I see myself in the branding because you mentioned that the branding is amazing. So that's what sets you apart is the amazing branding. Um, I'm going to want to post it on Instagram when I when I go there and um, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be what's setting me apart. The one thing about um, uh, target markets is you also you know you want to say you know women um lgbtq um you don't want to say men um but you also you want to be specific if even if you can give them learning is as we go so let's give them another round of applause that was excellent another example who wants to go next this is super fun i love this part of the session here so who's going to pitch next who's going to communicate their business yes Woo! it's not easy folks it's not easy what was your name my friend Jesse, all right, give Jesse a round of applause. Uh, my name is Jesse. Um, I'm a red seal welder by trade with a pretty heavy background in sales. Um, I've kind of been elected to be the front man for a group of diamond cutters and polishers. And what we're doing is we're going to be cutting a bunch of diamonds or polishing them and sending them back out to stores. Also, another big thing that we're trying to do is people's pets, if they die, they get the cremated them, can send the ashes away, get that turned into a lab-grown diamond, comes back to us and we can cut it and set it in whatever you're looking for, watch, bracelet, glasses, anything like that. And 
the thing that really sets us apart is there's over 120 years of experience with these six people that I'm representing. That's that kind cool. of our thing. Thank you. That is an example of a perfectly like he could have been in an elevator with someone, like had a conversation, and by the tour, the, by the doors open, that person would have been walking out. He'd be like, you know, my auntie, uh, she, she, you know, Max was her favorite dog, and uh, I, you know, I'm gonna mention to her that I met this really, uh, this really uh, impressive gentleman with uh, with some of the best background and experience around to really make a meaningful gift. So the person you're talking to might not be the person that will ultimately buy your product and service, but it's about articulating your business and what your service is, so that. If they're not the right person, they can articulate that to to their Aunt Debbie, who's, uh, whose dog just died, and you want to do something special for them. You know what, Aunt Debbie, I got you this. Um, I hope this is meaningful to you. And uh, and although I'm not the person who, who may not want it, I'm able to know who the best customer is for that. So that was excellent. One thing I really liked about um, about the pitch as well was he told around his back his personal background experience, being a real serial uh, journeyman, and what set him apart. This is another great idea. Uh, um, um, example of a great value proposition in terms of a quality and service aspect to it is the expertise. If you have a, the ability or expertise, or maybe you have access to traditional indigenous knowledge that no one else has in the region, that's a particular expertise, right? Um, he has a group of team members that is unmatched. So when you go to his, uh, when you use his diamond cutting services, um, you're going to find quality nowhere else, right? So that's a great example. Um, the target market, he gave us an idea. We got an inclination of it, but we could get a little bit. Target market is the hardest, probably probably one of the hardest things of the pitch. So we heard a business to business pitch there a little bit too. So how he would be selling diamond, uh, he would be polishing and, and 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 refining the diamonds and selling to other businesses. So your customer might not be direct to consumer, um, but he does have a direct to consumer aspect to it with the with the um, with the with the lab grow diamonds and having some kind of in, uh, in, um, um, uh, 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 Having infused with uh, with the loving memory of an animal um, uh, or loved uh, loved one, a family loved one. So uh, so although your business doesn't need to always sell direct to consumer, it could go to other businesses as well. But uh, but you you want to articulate that. Make sure that you're diving into that. What kind of businesses, jewelers, okay, things like that. Um, who wants to go next? I think we. You know what, we'll go. We have about two minutes left. Two two. I, you know I think we'd be okay with squeezing in maybe. One more, you're thinking? Yeah? Yeah, I think this is fun. Honestly, I have so much fun with this one. Um, so who wants to go next? I see some uh, really enthusiastic eyes. I, I'm kind of looking over here. I might I might use the power of awkward silence. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to start now. Dun, 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 dun. We got one? We got a pitch. We got a pitch. Let's go. Let's go. All right. What's your name, my friend? Tyson. Tyson. All right. So Tyson, tell us a little bit more about myself and then your business idea, my friend. Let's go. <laughs> this is hard for me to do. Uh, my name is Tyson Carrier. I'm a member of Red Pheasant First Nation. Uh, my business is, um, I call it a Spirit Stone Equine Assisted Learning, where I take... Um, People, kids, to work with horses. Uh, I wrote this down. So. Uh, Spearstone Equine Assistant Learning is a family-run indigenous-based service. Allows indi individuals, teaches them life skills through horses. Um, skills such as trust, relationship building, communication, team building, body language, and respect. There's no... Um, no horse experience needed and if you're afraid of horses i have horses that i basically try to match you up with the kind of person you are so my experiences i basically i learned with the chuck wagons you see them in calgary you see them in calgary uh, uh all over saskatchewan and my partner's um, experiences she's rodeo she ropes and barrel races, so there's a lot of experience. And her daughter's same thing, ropes and barrel races. So there's a lot of experience with horses. And before I even start with anything, I run everybody through the safety, where to step, how to haul the horse, how to basically walk with the horses. So that's what it's what's that to be part of the 
What sets us apart is before I start anything, we have a TP set up right by my red arena. And we have a sharing circle in there. So we try to do things with the horse spirit, basically, working with the horse spirit. Wow, that was awesome. That was, uh, that was rough. And who's your target market, you? Well, our target market, I've been having kids from school. I tried to run it through, um, like, with, um, I've had kids from Soda Reserve, Sweetgrass Reserve, Mosquito Reserve. And I tried to get them from, say, grade eight. No, um, eight, eight years old and up, I guess. Perfect. I love that. Yeah. That's and I've even had, I've even, we've even had staff to come. Staff, yeah. Yeah, where it's, uh, where you got to work with other staff, and it was fun. Yeah. Seeing Honestly, people I have... the staff taking the youth there, because this is getting me excited myself, so. That was excellent. Everyone give them a round of applause. You know what? You know what is excellent about that? Um, who knows, who knows a child, either in your family or immediate circle that's in school, Right. Everyone in the room, right? So although I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I may not be in school or, 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 or uh, you know, going through grade school still, but all of us know an Indigenous youth from, or potentially from Sweetgrass. So really like what, in terms of his demographic, he told us what age, what's their age range? What communities are they from, right? And he described who would be best. And in terms of what sets them apart is, you know, equine, um, like um, horse therapy and workshop um, type businesses, is this could be the only one in X amount of kilometers that's grounded in true indigenous knowledge that takes part and, and grounds that type of work within that. And that's really what I would send, you know, uh, my little one to that to make sure that they're being grounded in that. They're, I know that they're going to be safe. We have, you know, amazing background and expertise. And we know exactly what the product and service is, you know, um, and what sets them apart. So again, let's give them a round of applause. That was excellent. And you know what the you know what the thing that I love about that? He said when Ray when he was walking up, he said, This is hard. I'm nervous. Or he said, I'm not what was it? I'm not used to this. Well, that's the whole point of it, right? You know, you're getting out of your comfort zone, you're trying, and and the more times that um that um that you do that, the more refined it's gonna get, the more that I'm gonna be able to articulate, the more people that you're gonna say, you know what? I have uh, you know, I have a little one that I, I want to send there, or I have uh, my niece has to go to this, right? So um really great. Um Probably a time. Honestly, I have so much fun with this. I'm like, oh, I love, I just, you know, maybe we'll try to fit in another one later. But, uh, you know, I think everyone's uh, probably got a, a, an appetite. One more? One more. Everyone who wants one more? Let's, everyone, one more. One more. One more. Okay, let's go. What's your name, my friend? Uh, Vice Chief. Vice Chief. Oh, very, hey. Let's go. Let's go. You know, there's, um, thank you. I greet you all in the name of the creator, our great spirit. Um, there's no mistake. I walked in here. I just came from a chief's meeting of 12 nations. Uh, I, ran, I ran councils over 43,000 people. Uh, three of us represent uh, the 12 tribes. And uh, there's no mistake I came here. And uh, I want to breathe hope. I always breathe, try to breathe hope to our people, no matter what. I, I own a business thanks to Saskatchewan Indian Equity Foundation. They funded my, my project. I became a chief uh, six years ago, and uh, I try to be with hope to everybody because leave no stone unturned in your life because you only have one opportunity. That's it. Be that vessel. Be that light for that person. Be that light for that next generation, what this young man has just said. And what he said, I'm nervous. The day you stop being nervous is the day that you stop caring. Even me, I talk to a lot of people. I still get nervous. I still can't figure out my Bannock song. I always sing the Bannock song in the audience. I still manage to screw up. You know what I mean? But I just want to encourage you, uh, keep doing what you're doing. It doesn't matter what the, how many the crowd is. The main thing is that you're here and hearing that because you, you, the next generation, we need to start breathing hope to them. You know, um, moving forward. But I got to go to a sweat here right away at 1 p.m. God bless you all. And you know what? Uh, we're still doing good at uh, great at uh, Job Tire. And uh, in the first, uh, just before I left, uh, we were Cooper Tires of the Sales in the North. We sold more Cooper Tires than anybody in, in PA, no, uh, Rostron to the, to the North. All, everybody beat everybody. And, um, <clears throat> and also, uh, that's not where it stops. I'm originally from South End Reindeer Lake. It's about six hours north of here. 
I'm opening up another business over there. I'm opening up a, a restaurant because there's no restaurant at back home. It used to be, but it's no longer open. But there's opportunity there. And there's a big opportunity coming in our territory. It's not in millions, it's in billions because we own 100% on the mining industry. It's graphite. It's one of the, as you see Tesla, as you see Lafarge, there's so, so much product that we're into graphite. Us. That's what we're doing. And um, I'm slowly going home to help out in this kind of business. So, uh, Short and sweet like me, I got to go. <laughs> God bless you all and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, man. That was, yeah. that was awesome. I don't know. You know, if 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 I didn't already get chills from the other pitches just because of how inspired I am, I definitely uh, definitely got chills from that. So I think that's a great way to, uh, to enter uh, our, our lunch hour. I feel the really great energy and spirit in the room. I think it's super exciting that we're in a safe space of other, other indigenous entrepreneurs um, and serial entrepreneurs. I mean, once you get the bug, um, you know, you get that itch. Um, it's hard to stop. I mean, look at Kendall Netmaker and and Devin Fiddler and and Chief who joined us today. And and uh, and uh, and yeah, so it's uh, I'm just really excited that everyone's here today. So, again, let's give everyone a round. Um, so let's take a break. Let's go for lunch. Let's uh, let's uh, get some courage and spirit and and energy back into our into our into, into our uh, into our bodies. And uh, we're going to be coming back. And I'm going to make all of you a little bit more uh, uncomfortable as we go along. But it's all going to be for good fun and 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 uh, and a good interaction. So let's take lunch. Um, you know, I might join a table or two, or if uh, if I might grab a spot. If you guys want to talk to me over lunch, I like to sit and eat eat with uh, with the people. And uh, we'll have a good uh, we'll have a good lunch. So everyone, um, yeah, we'll see you at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. We'll be back. Alrighty, go to the booths, talk to people, get your uh, get those supports wrapped around you. All right, talk soon. All right, there we go. So we're gonna be shutting her down for a bit here. I finally figured out what was going on with my audio. It's this thing. I have these new headsets. I have these new headsets. And every time I lift up, it switches to another uh, audio, which then makes the audio a little bad. So if you didn't hear it before, you're going to hear it again, that sometimes you've got to be ready for anything, especially when you're live. And uh, Mavis Sanderson, I want to give a shout out to you. That was, you know, for being participating. And uh, thank you, to, uh, Cousin Tara, for uh, watching and uh, telling me about the audio. And... Um, you guys uh, come back here. So one o'clock, wherever you're watching from, that's in about 45 minutes. Um, and then we're going to show the booths. So I'm going to hopefully get these people here that are in the booths to come here and chit chat. Uh, but everyone's pretty sigh, but uh, hopefully that'll help them out. Anyway, I'm out. I will see you in uh, 45 minutes.